And welcome out to Finley's Dunnell Stadium here on WOSN. Chris Malang along with Jerry Snodgrass as we've got Colonel Crawford and Columbus Grove in this Division Six Region 22 semifinals. Good evening, Jerry. Welcome and thanks for being here. Oh, it's awesome. And can I finally say that it's actually football weather now? <laughs> I know some of our viewers may not think that, but uh, it's it, what a great facility we're at. You know, thanks to Nate Wyrock, who is hosting us. And, uh, this round of, we've got two very, very good balanced teams. You know, and I, looking at these teams, we watched some video on them. They seem pretty evenly matched when you look down. You know, and again, I think a little two different styles mainly, yep. but at the same time, both have strengths that... The other one is strong, too. So, you know, this should be a very, very good game. Absolutely. Taking a look at the history just a little bit, Columbus Grove and Colonel Crawford have not met in the playoffs. Uh, Colonel Crawford is making its third straight appearance in the playoffs, seventh overall. They finished regional semifinalists in 2015 and 2020, and they're basically fairly new to the playoff scene. They have a 6-6 six and six record in the playoffs, but Columbus Grove is a team that has definitely got a lot of playoff history. Yeah, not only history, but tradition and, you know, everything. To Colonel Crawford for a little bit. I remember, it gives my age away a little bit, of the old days where they were very, very good. There have been a lot of conference changes in Northwest Ohio, and that's kind of shaking things up. But, on the other hand, they just defeated a giant okay. coming in here. Carry. They defeated Carry to get in here. And, you know, they had lost to Carry earlier in the season and were able to redeem themselves just a little bit. Uh, they snapped Carry's 26 game win streak. So, yeah, that's pretty impressive. And, Cam Lore, we're going to talk about them for. Uh, for the quarterback for uh, Crawford, he had 177 passing yards, 72 rushing yards in the game, including a, a 45-yard touchdown run right up the, the sideline. And I was just going to say, you know, he's a, a very, very good runner. Uh, they run out of the, uh, not single wing, but they run out of the wing, wing tee. And, uh, you know, really look to run a lot. I know in one of the games, you know, he carried the first five or six possessions of the game. So, but you can't fall asleep on him because he'll turn around and throw, especially that throwback and uh, very effective. Absolutely. Well, they're scoring 32.9 points per game while allowing just 10.8 points per game. Um, and they entered the playoffs in the, as the eighth seed. Um, last year, they were 10-2, and two, and the only uh, regular season loss was at Cary, and they lost to Crestview in the second round of the playoffs last year. Jake Bruner is now their head coach. He's been an assistant at, at Crawford since 2012, and he was offensive coordinator for the last five years. But before that, he had some head coaching experience at Bucyrus from 2004 to 2011. How does that head coaching experience at another school help him here in his first year? Well, you know, first of all, Bucyrus, where he was at, you know, big rival. You know, it's, it's right across the county there but uh, you know I think when you're coordinating certain aspects of the game that just enters into the to the head coaching part so I think he knows all areas of it and you know even though this is his first head coaching you know at uh, Crawford um, it, both these coaches are very good yep. very solid coaches they are and they, as you said they run the wing tee a 4-2-5 defense I like to spread it around and the thing that threw me it was just looking at the stats is they're allowing only 4.2 far yards yards per play to opponents and uh, the foes are averaging 3.4 yards per rush and uh, only 97 yards rushing per game and uh <laughs> that's a that's a crazy number yeah kind of an immovable object and i think that's what is going to make this game so so interesting Absolutely. Now we look on the other side to Columbus Grove, and they're a team with a lot of tradition. Playoffs for three straight years, four out of the last five, 16 total appearances. Um, and they were uh, the 2003 state champs and four-time regional champs, the last coming in 2014. They have a 26-14 and 14 postseason record. They're a team with a lot of history, as you said. Yeah, they do have a lot of history. Andy Schaefer is one of the, I think, one of the best coaches in this area. You know, and sometimes I think we overlook small school coaches. Mm -hmm. But, you know, on the other hand, they have chances to go a lot of different places. They stay in their towns and build programs and build young men. And that's one of the things I like about it. They went into the season this year really challenging that offensive line to be better than they were a year ago. He felt that that was a weakness of them a year ago. And, boy, they've risen to the challenge. They really have. And you think about it, you know, they were 11-1 and last year after a perfect regular season. Two straight regular seasons perfect. That's hard to do in high school football. It certainly is. And you know what? They play in a very solid conference in that Northwest Conference. They absolutely do. Uh, they have eight starters returning on offense and seven on defense. They lost ten seniors, including a guy that's uh, kicking and punting at Marshall University. You know, I'm <laughs> glad you mentioned him because, you know, I, I followed, you know, uh, Reese Verhoff, you know, when he was in his younger days. I kind of followed him all the way through his high school career. And my son was a kicker in high school, so here at Finley High School. So um, I've always 
felt special to those kickers, and he was really very, very good kicker, at, and he now is at Marshall. All right, we're going to take a quick time out here on WOSN. Colonel Crawford, Columbus Grove coming up. Back out here at Donnell Stadium in Finley, Chris Malanga, Jerry Snodgrass, Colonial Crawford versus Columbus Grove, Division Six Regional 22 semifinal. Uh, before we took our quick break, we were talking about Columbus Grove. You mentioned Reese Bierhoff, who is at Marshall, and that's kind of cool to see. Uh, these guys, Columbus Grove, have won seven straight. They started the season three and two, and you talk, we talked about Kerry having that impressive 26-game streak. They, Columbus Grove has put together seven straight. Yes, they have, and again, it gets good competition. And, you know, things have just gone very well for them. And I think, you know, they've avoided the injury bug. And uh, they've just, they've really come on and, and stayed solid all throughout the year. Grove is 10-2, and 6-1 and one in the Northwest Conference. Last week they beat West Salem Northwestern 34-22. Trenton Barraza had 21 carries for 125 rushing yards and a touchdown. He caught five passes for 50 yards, and he had an interception defensively. So Barraza uh, really key to that Grove offense and defense. And then running back A.J. Schaefer had three rushing touchdowns in that game. And so Columbus Grove comes into here feeling good, and uh, they're looking for a win against Crawford. And, you know, they run a pretty wide-open attack. Uh, but at the same time, you mentioned Barraza's name. They've got a great running combination in Barraza and Schaefer. And, you know, Barraza has speed, hits the hole fast, had some great long runs for touchdowns here in the playoffs. Then you get Andy Schaefer in there, and he just puts those shoulders down and goes right over people. And he's, he's one of those running backs that uh, you just love to have on your team. All right, so we uh, saw the toss, and uh, Columbus Grove won the toss. They deferred to the second half, which means Crawford is going to get the ball first. So let's take a look at the keys to the game here uh, for first for uh, Colonel Crawford. Well, you know, one of the things that, you know, I talk about the good offensive line, they have to win the battle up front. And I think that's, that's going to be key because you've got two immovable objects there, and I, I think that's going to be key. Two... You know, everybody talks about analytics in a game. Everybody talks about what you do on third and long. What are your best plays, so on and so forth. You know what? You can't map out turnovers. Yep. And so, you know, I think every game, every coach says this, but they've got to win the turnover battle. And I say that, too, because they've had trouble holding on to the ball throughout the year. So that's going to be a big key. Three, eliminate the big plays and create more big plays than Columbus Grove has. They had – Grove had two pick sixes – uh, I think in one of their playoff games yep. here, I think their first round playoff game, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, those are big plays. You've got to avoid them. But lastly, they've got to be physical. And I think they're a team that is physical, so they just need to keep doing that. Taking a look at the other side for Columbus Grove, what do the Bulldogs have to do? Well, I'll go right back to the other thing. <laughs> Win the trenches, you know. Do the job in the trenches and the do the dirty work. Battle up front. You know, two – this is the first time that they all year in 13 games now or 12 previous that they have not seen a spread offense now they're going against the wing tee and i will tell you history tells you when you watch schools that play against the wing tee for the first time they struggle with it and i think that's going to be a big key they've got to just know it. who's going to get the ball that's you don't know correct who's going to get it. you got to stay home linebackers have to fill and that's going to be a big key thirdly they need to play clean and again i think again a lot of coaches will say this all the time but no penalties and uh, uh th that's another thing watching some film on grove they had a lot of penalties they did. in a couple of games including a lot of holding penalties that could two that re uh, touchdown got Th that's back exactly on that. right and i think that's something that they focused on yep. all week long is keeping things clean and lastly i think this is part we talked about reese Verhoff. they've got to have good field position the kicking game for at playoff time is probably more important than ever and they can't, you know, I'll go back to a Jim Tressel-ism here. The punt might be one of your favorite plays at yep. times, you know. And the other part of that, and, and this was a big factor in one of the games I watched, they need to field all their punts. They need to catch the punt. And it seems trivial, but in one of the games I watched, there were about five or six that they didn't. Other team got the roll, put them in a bad field position. So flipping the field is not so bad in the playoffs. Absolutely. Those are your keys to the game for both Crawford and Columbus Grove as we're just about to get underway. Let's uh, meet our starting lineups uh, first for Colonel Crawford because they will get the ball first. Uh, let's take a look at their the team here. Uh, let's just mention some of the uh, the players that you're going to see uh, on here, that the kind of the big dogs. Cam Lohr, a 5'11", 190-pound senior. He is 59.6% uh, passing. He's got 1,000.
1,066 yards coming into tonight. 22 touchdowns, three interceptions. He also has six and a half yards of carry and six touchdowns on the ground. First team all league. Matt Kleinard is going to be another one. 5'11", 195 pound senior. 127 carries, 798 yards, 11 touchdowns. That's sixth in their league. Uh, he also has 100, uh, 12 receptions, 128 yards there and a touchdown. He has, and on the defensive side, he has 103 tackles, which is eighth in the league. Micah Thomas is another back. 58 carries, 437 yards and 11 touchdowns. Tanner Dyer is another one. You're going to see the high hand to him. 74 carries, 576 yards, nine touchdowns. And then their big wide out, Trevor Vogt, is 6'1", 170 pounds. And this kid is first team all league. He's special teams player of the year in the league. He has 32 receptions, 759 yards, uh, 12 touchdowns, fifth in the league. He also is big in the kick return and the punt return. And so we're going to, you know, see what he can do later there. And uh, Gabe Few, I'll just mention one defensive thing, 152 tackles, 26 for loss, five forced fumbles, and he's a first team all leaguer. About ready to get this one underway. Columbus Grove will be kicking off. Kicker is Shep Hulker. You know, speaking of Shep Hulker, you can tell I was a parent of a kicker, but uh, they really have high hopes on Hawker too. That uh, they've got a freshman. Uh, that you know, kickers unfortunately don't always get a lot of extra time. You know, if you're if you're not the starting kicker, but uh, they really have high hopes. And again, I go back to that Reese Verhoff thing. One of the things about having a great kicker at the high school level, it becomes contagious. Kids want to become a good kicker because you know what? They look at they can go to college for free and typically not get banged up. You so, know, the other thing, looking at, they said that uh, Hawker was kind of a mentor by Virhoff yes. as well. Yep. So he's had some chance to work with a guy that went to Division One. Speaks volumes of high school Absolutely. kids, too. Kick is away. It will come down to Crawford at the 10 yard line, and they'll come up to the 15, out to the 20. Big hole there, out to the 25, and down at the 28 yard line. And that was number five, uh, Trevor Boat. And he's a threat when you have a when you have a kickoff return too. Yep. You know, and one of the things I think we should say right up front, we have a struggle here with yellow on white yeah. with the numbers, gold Absolutely. on white. That's a that's tough. It that's is tough. really hard to see from here. Fortunately, on the TV monitor we have, we can see him a little bit better. So we might need to, to cheat just a little bit. When I become in charge of the uniform police, I'm banning it. Absolutely. I love that. Cam Lohr is your quarterback. He is uh, 59%. Uh, for, the, for the season, he was a first-team all-league guy on the offensive side. He's got a back at his hip, and that is Kleinert. That'll be a handoff. Kleinert will head forward, cross the 30-yard line, but go no further. That'll be about a pickup of two. They're going to actually, yep, they're going to give him exactly two as he goes out to the 31-yard line. Well, you know, our Grove comes out in a 4-3, which they've done defensively all, all along. And I think at the start of the year when they went into this year, I think one of uh, uh, Coach... Uh, Schaefer's things was linebackers, linebackers, linebackers. Thought that's really where they would be strong, and they have been. Kleinert is your back on the right side of Lore. Lore will keep it. He'll get out to the 40-yard line, cross the 40, be tackled, and uh, get the first down for the first first down of the game for Crawford. And we watch, if we watch, oh, yeah, we watch number 53 there. He's done such a solid job. And that wing tee, you've got that guard pulling. Their guards, I think, were both all N10 all-conference. Yeah. And, boy, they do a number. Uh, on, and that's, you know, that's why you see him carrying the ball so much. And 53 Ketterman is the first team all lead yes. on both the offensive and defensive yes. lines. So they'll send a receiver out. Votes out there on the in the slot, basically, and he's got two backs in the backfield. Lore does now. Vote will go in motion, going left to right. This will be a handoff. This is Kleiner, and he will get just a couple of yards. Actually, he just got back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, I talked too about you know their linebackers for Grove being so good because, and they are, and uh, they sent one that time. But at the same time, I forgot to say. Kleinard is a load to bring down. He is. He is tough carrying the ball. And he has uh, one, one of the things you'll see from him is receptions out of the backfield. That was one of the things in watching the, the film about them that he likes to take it out of the backfield for the pass. Yeah, and you'll also see him, you know, where they'll go right and he'll sneak out there in that little fade pass to the left. You Twin, can't fall asleep on him. Twins on the far side. This is a handoff. And Grove does a great job of swarming. He lost the yard on that one. Out to the 43. 
Yeah, look at those linebackers just go down the line and fill in. 14, Landon Schrader was in there in the backfield. And anytime you can get guys in the backfield, that's a positive thing on the defense. Twins here on the near side, one wide out on the far side. One back in the backfield. Also have a tight end. Lohr has it. Looking to throw down the field. He'll throw. And just outside the outstretched hands, it almost picked off by Antonio Gray. He had a 95-yard interception return against Black River, and he knows where the ball is. Yes, he did, and you really have to give credit to the rush on that. You know, that, that pass, he looked like he had all the time in the world, and, boy, he just he, he saved himself by getting rid of it. That'll make it fourth and ten, so it'll be a punt, and Kleiner will come back to do the punting duties as well. And if you look back, you've got... I believe that's Barraza back there to receive that kick, and he's standing at his own 30. Low snap, kick is away. Barraza will watch it bounce at the 30, and it'll get a roll for Crawford. And you had talked about this early I in did. the game. I mean, he didn't go anywhere near it, and I'm sure you know there was a reason for it. But he's also the leading punt returner in the N10 conference. All right, so they'll see Grove for the first time as they come out. They're led by quarterback Brent. Bretton Renner, he is 56% uh, passing, 83 or 147, 1,126 yards to six touchdowns to eight interceptions. And this is going to be more like a traditional offense that you would see. And he has Barraza in the backfield. They're operating out of the pistol formation with one back. High snap. This will be a handoff. Here's Barraza. Raza trying to get the corner, and he will not. He'll actually end up losing about a yard. Barraza trying to get across on that jet sweep. Yeah, coming out in motion, or not in motion, but he's got good blocking up ahead. But Grove just does a great job stringing that out. So that'll make it second and 11 now. Grove will have it on their own 14-yard line. Crawford had the ball first, and they punted away. Now we've got trips here on the near side, the short side of the field, one wide out on the far side. Looking to pass, being flushed out of the pocket, now rolling to his right. Catch is not made. Nice pass defense in there. I don't know if that was intended for Shep Hawker or what. But credit to Grove defense on that for good coverage downfield. He really had no one. He hadn't intended to sprint out, but uh, well covered by, Gro or by uh, Colonel Crawford. So that'll make it third and 11. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor, Hawker Drywall and uh, Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Third and 11 for Grove. Man in motion. This will be a handoff. This is Schaefer. Schaefer breaks a couple of tackles, gets out to the 24-yard uh, line. Gonna come it's not going to be short. enough. So both teams not able to get the offenses going, and Grove's going to have to punt. Well, so far, I know we're only four minutes into this game, but kind of turning out what we thought. You know, yep. good, solid defense. Well, the line of scrimmage is so, so tough for either team to dominate. Renner is back to punt. The quarterback will also do punting duties. Back to receive is, boy, I think, hard to see those numbers again. Kick is in the air. Getting away from it. This will take a really big Columbus Grove bounce. And inside the 25-yard line down to the 22. Big punt. You know, too, when I talked about, you know, them wanting to field the ball, that was one of the things Grove's coach said was, I don't think they've played on an artificial surface all year. And it so, all bounces differently. Exactly right. So this will be Crawford's second chance here. They'll do it from their own 22-yard line. And let's see if Grove can hold him this time like they did last time. Cameron Lohr is your quarterback. He's got a back with him in the backfield. That's Kleiner. Twins here on the near side. Line of scrimmage is at the 22. Barking out the signals. They'll hand off. Kleiner will have it. He'll get out to the 25 and no more. Pick up a three on first down. You know, that is their bread and butter. And, you know, you've got that guard pulling and leading the way. And, you know, they're, when they get, you know, here three yards of a crack, you know, 
They'll set up that pass, but it's still they're going with their bread and butter right now. So now Twins will go to the the uh, far side of the field, which is the short side. They've got a tight end as well. Now they'll move a receiver a little bit closer into the slot. Back in the backfield with Lore. Lore will keep. Lore will get out to the 30 and will be tackled at the 35-yard line, which should be good for a Dales Concrete first down. Call Dales Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all commercial and residential concrete needs. So a first first down of the game. You know, you mentioned Lore at the, in the pregame, you know, 650 yards rushing on 100 attempts. He has, you know, he's a great ball carrier. He absolutely is. And it's a dual threat, basically. Right. So now double backs in the backfield. One lone wide out here on the near side of the field. This will be a handoff and immediately swarmed by Grove. That was Feinert again. Grove did a great job, and again, number 14, Schrader, is in there again. We've called his name a couple of times already tonight. He's in that backfield pretty quickly. Yes, he, he does a great job out of that. He's one of those linebackers that you know, just comes up, fills, and reads the thing real well. 6-12 and counting here, first quarter, no score between the Bulldogs and the Eagles. One wide out on each side now, one back in the backfield. This will be a quarterback keeper. Lore will... Get a couple of yards, but the running is rough down there with this throw defense. He gets out to the 38-yard line. That'll be a pickup of four. And they're keying on him. I mean, there's no question about it, especially, you know, as we talked about with the film we watched, you know, the number of times he would carry that ball. And then it seems like they would they would do that and then just to set up something else, which is normal, but uh, they would just run it down your throat as much as they could and then go with the pass. Now it's third and seven. What do you dial up here if you're Crawford? Well, you know, here you wonder, you know, we saw that, you know, if they have that, you know, fake jet sweep and then, you know, throw back to the other side. Empty backfield. Yep, one uh, back in, or one right out goes in motion. It's going to be a pass. Lohr will throw down the field. Catch is made for the first down in inside Grove territory. Trying to get a number on that one. That was 32 Kleinert out of the backfield. Yeah, that we was talked great about route that. Yeah, that was great route running too. Finding that open spot. So that is another Dale's concrete first down. And that takes it into Grove territory down at the 49 yard line. So Crawford moving the ball on their second drive. Yeah, that's tough on the backers too, you know, linebackers for Columbus Grove. You know, they, they need to stay home, you know, so tempting because they've just rushed, rushed, rushed. And, you know, then it's, again, found a great, great hole in that zone defense. Double wideouts. Quick throw to the right. Catch is made. And being a couple yards after the catch, getting about five yards, is Kleinert again. Actually, I take that bat. That was Micah Thomas. 32 and 22 look alike. That was a low catch to make, too. Yeah, and I also will tell you, the numbers look a lot better on the screen they than do. they do from our vantage point. They do. That's I'm amazing. often looking down to, to take a look at that. First. Up here, it's really hard to see anybody. I'm sure it's our cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so double wide receivers, twins on the far side. Got a back in the backfield. They're looking over to the sideline here to see what they set up. Lowers your quarterback. And he's got Kleinard with him. This will be a handoff to Kleinard. Kleinard. Chernin gets to the 40-yard line, crosses the 40-yard line, real close to a first down. Where the first official is, I don't think he has it. Yeah, I think they're going to mark it short, but boy, he just, he that was on second effort, too. Yep. So that'll make it third and short. I think it might measure. I'm not sure. No, they, nope, they, nope. they have to get to the 39, and the ball right now, the nose of the ball is right at the 40. You know, third and short, that's, you know, a good position to be in. Moved the ball effectively here in the first quarter. Now under center is Lore. He will hand off and pushing the pile forward. I think where the initial official is, he's got the first down. I don't even know who that was. Trying to get a number. Again, number's hard to see there. I think it was number 19. Ryan McMichael, I think, is who had it. Oh, now they backed it up. Let's see, now they're going to take a measurement. Chris Mulligan and Jerry Snodgrass here with you here on WOSN. And uh, boy, oh boy, it's a fun one tonight between uh, Columbus Grove and Colonel Crawford. Yeah, you know, and you, you a lot of people, you know, want high-scoring events. And 
I get it, but at the same time, you know, you're talking about, you know, the hard work, you know, defenses, defenses win championships, and when you're at this level of the playoffs, you better be a good defensive team. All right, we are going to get a measurement. If he's short, he's just just short. Let's see as they stretch these out. He, let's see. Just short. Just short. I credit you with your eyesight because you're wow. right. Couldn't be six inches. Oh, couldn't do that. Whoa. And I'm sure they will go for it. Yeah, it's I mean, pretty much Fort on territory right here, you'd think. I didn't see any film whether they've got a wildcat formation where they snap it directly to the finder, but that might be the right. thing to do right here. And they talk about fourth and inches. It's a game of inches, and they literally have inches to go. Let's see what they do. They've got a big package in there. They've got two backs. More. I may have fumbled the snap. Let's see. Grove says they have it. Grove says they have it. Let's see. Well, They're if they don't, they got the first down. <laughs> They're trying to unsort it out. I haven't seen a signal yet. No signal yet. Grove, okay. turnover. Wow, that was big. Actually, I think even there, I believe they measured it. I believe that they recovered uh, uh, from the did, but I think it was short. Okay. So... It'll be Grove ball now, just inside the 40-yard line at the 39. Yeah, because they did move the chains a little bit that way. So let's see what Grove does on their second. You know, and again, I go back to the fact that, you know, they've had trouble hanging onto the there ball. Of course, he was under center on that, yep. too, which is, I think, about the first snap. High snap to the quarterback. This will be Barraza, and he gets strung out, and not much at all. Running is tough. He picked up maybe a yard. I think he had a tough time getting a hold of the ball, getting a handle on the ball there, and it slowed him down a little bit. But you got a high snap like that, yep. and you got a runner coming Timing. through. Timing is Timing. everything. Yep. We'll make it second, and we'll say nine. It's more like nine and a half. He's got Shep Halker in there at wide out. Also going to see Zane Steckscholey there, and two backs in the backfield. Man in motion. Schaefer, and we're going to get a false start. Yep. Left guard, I think, or left tackle. Left guard. That's Kyle Lathrop, and he will cause Grove to march back five yards. Five yard penalty. And coming into the Second playoffs, they had um, not very many penalties, but in some of their playoff games, Grove has struggled with penalties. Yes, they have. And like you mentioned, you know, a couple holding penalties that negated scores. There's only 226 remaining. Here in the first quarter, another stat. Grove has 111 points in first quarters. None so far tonight. Catch is made and still on his feet. And a big catch for just a little bit of yards, a pickup of six. I think that was Shep Halker again. And that's still now that puts him third and long, I believe. Yep. Got about six of those back. That's uh, Halker had uh, 30 receptions for 500 yards so far this season and five touchdowns. That was good for sixth in their league, but. Third and long, third and eight for Grove. So they're going to bring Zach Reynolds here, Hawker here as well on this side. They've got a, another receiver bunched and one on the far side. Rolling is Renner looking to throw. He's being chased. Renner will throw down the field and basically just throw it out of bounds. Yeah, he's rolling to his left. That's a tough throw. But again, right-handed guy, throw yeah. it running to your left. Hard but to make again, a play. you have to credit, boy, he's being chased down from behind. And, uh, boy, I tell you, uh, Colonel Crawford's line, uh, they've got speed, uh, strong pursuit. There's been nothing easy for Columbus Grove right yet. All right, so it's going to be another punt. Renner is lined up to punt, back to receive for Crawford. I think this is Voigt again. Again, these numbers, the yellow numbers on white are hard to see. That's yep. blocked. Crawford blocks the punt. Let's see. It's a foot race, basically. And Crawford will fall on it inside the 10 at the five-yard line. Oh, hopefully we got that one on replay. That was amazing. It was a foot yeah. race. Look at this. Wow. Punt is blocked. 
And our camera guys got fooled by it, and here they come. You can see on that replay, the Grove player pushes the Crawford player out of the way, but it didn't matter. No, it wouldn't have mattered any, Alan. Well, you know, we go back to the keys of the game, you know, turnovers, you know, no big mistakes. Now it's first and goal from the four for Crawford, and they look like they might strike first here. And special team play. They're going to have to take a timeout. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. They, they no, they got time. Lohr has it. High snap. He'll keep it on the ground, and he will chug in for the end zone. So touchdown, Cam Lohr, and the Eagles will take a 6-0 lead here with a minute 26 remaining first quarter. Again, Grove has outscored teams 111 to 12 in the first quarter. Grove zero, Eagles six right now. I will tell you, you know, that in our coverage area all the time, typically we don't see Columbus Grove, we, or excuse me, we don't see Colonel Crawford, we see Grove, but I'm impressed with Colonel uh, Crawford. I'm very impressed. The extra point is gonna be from Braxton Morton. Kick is up and it is good. So with a minute 26 remaining first quarter, Colonel Crawford goes up on Columbus Grove seven to nothing. We'll take a quick timeout back after this on WOSN. Back out here from Finley on WOSN, Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass, and Jerry, uh, the Eagles took advantage of a block punt to quickly score and take a seven nothing lead. Yeah, you know, when you're talking about a, a strong defensive battle, both teams being very good defensively, turnovers can be so critical and there you go resulted it in a score and one play later now it was going to be a, a turnover on you know a punt anyway so Crawford was going to get it but instead of getting it all the way back in their end they got it on the four that offensive drive from four yards out's a lot easier That's than one right, from absolutely. 60 70 yards out. absolutely so Crawford will kick off Morton will put a foot into it Braxton Morton hits it it'll go high Coming down with it for Grove. Out to the 30 yard line, we got a flag down. And it'll be just outside the third, well, I'm gonna say right at the 35 yard line. Good solid run back, but I think we got a block in yep. the back, I believe. Hawker was the guy. So, Grove is moving back, so. Let's see what we got. Still haven't seen a signal. On the return. Number 11, Columbus Grove with a hold. It'll be first down, 10 yards back from the spot of the plow. All right, so 10 yard penalty on the hold. And that'll back Grove all the way up to the 15 yard line. So they're gonna have some work cut out for them. Now a big key for Grove, it's so early in the game. And you know, we take a look at our officials there. Great officiating crew, by the way. Carl Schlegel, Mark Keller, Curtis Bigelow, Jim Lanise, uh, Kleckner, Danny Kleckner, and uh, Paul Manfredi. Um, that's a good crew. I know Carl Schlegel's been around for a long time. and A uh, long, solid basketball official, too. All right, so Grove has it. This will be a handoff. And stopped with just about a yard pickup. That was... Uh, Barraza. You know, you talk about all the scoring by Grove in the first quarter of the games this year. You know, that really has been done by Barraza and uh, Schaefer. You know, and they, they use them and they just run over people. But Columbus, or uh, Colonel Crawford, um, doing such a great job. And by the way, if I'm mixing up names all the time, every team in this region starts with a C, yeah, by the way. I absolutely. Hope you saw that. So, absolutely. My built in excuse. <laughs> Quick run there. That's Barraza again. Stop was made by 54 Gander. So third and about four. Big third down for Grove. Yeah, they need to get, get them offense going. Runner looks to the sideline. He has it. Looking to throw, throws across, that's Barraza. Barraza to the 30, and he will get up close to a first down. I think he's got it though. Yep. I think he crossed that uh, 25 yard line, excuse me. And he has a first down there. So really critical there to get that first down from Dale's Concrete. That's that's really important. Well, you know, they're giving that ball to Barraza, you know, and giving him some room, getting him out in the open. 
and let him use his speed. That's the end of the first quarter with your score, the Colonel Crawford Eagles seven, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs nothing. We'll be back after this timeout on WOSN. Just underway here in the second quarter. You can see the heater on the sideline there. A cold night here at Donnell Stadium for Columbus Grove and Colonel Crawford. Crawford leads seven to nothing. Grove has a first down at their own 27. Here's a run by A.J. Schaefer, and Schaefer will pick up a couple of yards, but not much. The running is tough there on that left side. Yeah, they've had really no luck running around the outside. We got our stats if you want to share any of those out for that first quarter. Well, I'm hoping I can see them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's difficult to see them in here, but uh, let me take a look here in just a minute. Now, Man in motion for Grove. This will be a handoff the other way. It's a little misdirection. And uh, Schaefer again goes to that left side. And again, the running is tough down there. Gets maybe another yard. You know, Schaefer in that first quarter, you know, two attempts, uh, thir or one, only 13 yards rushing and a uh, total of 14, 16 yards for, uh, for the quarter on that. Passing-wise, uh, Grove has a uh, total of uh, 11 yards passing in the first quarter. And... Um, you know, it's kind of putting them in a bad spot. Trips what? here on the near side, looking to throw. Renner goes back, finds a guy across the middle, just unable to connect. That was Shep Halker. Yeah, Colonel Crawford on that first quarter, 38 yards rushing, uh, 14 yards passing. And again, it's been a defensive struggle. It really has. So this will be fourth down, and Grove's going to have to punt again. And that is going to be tough going as the – Bulldogs not able to do too much offensively. Well, one thing about, uh, you know, uh, I think that Andy, Coach Andy Schaefer does very well is, you know, they've gone through that first quarter and they're seeing some things don't work. You know, I think they'll make some very, very good adjustments. This punt basically went off the side of his foot and didn't go very far. It's barely crossing the 50, and they're going to down it at the 42-yard uh, line. So a uh, short punt, and uh, Colonel Crawford will be pretty close to uh, territory of Columbus yeah. Grove. Excellent field position. So what does Crawford come out with? They just continue to do what they've been doing? Yeah, I think they will. I think they feel, I think they're very confident with a lead like this. and uh, I think they're just going to keep trying to run it down their throat. I think you're going to see still a lot of using that wing tee. You're going to see a lot of pulling. So first and ten. Crawford. Lohr has it. There he comes, yep. And that's going to be Kleinert. And Kleinert is trying to get some, fight for some yards. He may be short by about a yard. Well, you know, at the same time, I give the Grove defense, I give them a lot of credit. You know, you take away that turnover, and I mean, they've done a good job defensively. They really have. So Crawford will have it second and 10. That's why, again, you talk about turnovers being such a key in a ball game. I know it's early. Lower will keep it, go through the middle of the line, pick up a couple of yards. There's nothing easy. No, it's not. <laughs> Both sides, nothing easy. Tackle by number 58, 58, Blankenmeyer will make the stop there, and it'll be third and fairly long at seven. Ten minutes to go here. Second quarter, pretty fast-moving game as most teams are. Most of the, both of the teams are uh, really running the ball. And been a pretty clean game so yep. far, you know, penalty-wise. So third and seven. Lohr in the shotgun. He's got double receivers here on the near side. One on the far. Quick rush coming. Catch is made, and that's good for a first down. I think that was Lohr. Yes, right over the middle. Threw into traffic. No, that was number eight for them. Eight is uh, Caden Bruner. So Bruner makes the catch. And are they saying he's short? There we go, first down. There we go. I think Andy Schaefer wants a, he wants wanted, a measurement there. He wanted a measurement. They gave it to him. So another first down by Dale's Concrete. 
Haldale's concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. First and 10, ball is on the Grove 47. Colonel Crawford has it. Man in motion comes across. Quick handoff. This is Bolt. Bolt will try to turn the corner and run again into trouble. Right there and maybe lose half a yard. And the running is tough on those sidelines. I mentioned Grove having very little luck on the outside. And I'll say that same thing right now about Colonel Crawford. They have had very little luck on that outside. Good job stringing that out. Linebackers. They were led by A.J. Schaefer. He called his name on the offensive yes. side, but he's also been playing some good linebacker tonight, too. Yeah, he's been fun to watch Him in the Schrader. last couple of years. So second and 10. Ball is at the 47-yard line. Now Lohr has two backs with him in the backfield, just one wide out here. This will be a handoff. And getting the turn and cutting up field and getting a couple of yards. Again, the running is really tough, and that was Kleinard. No, I take that back. That was Micah Thomas. And now we've got a timeout for the officials' timeout. Let's see if we had an equipment problem or boats heading off the field. Landon, Sh Landon Schrader, you know, slowed that up in the backfield. Just missed the tackle, but still, by slowing him up like that, making him change direction, let everybody else get in on that. Third and eight. You talked about it being a defensive battle. The only score came after a block punt. And so you're right. It's been tough going for both teams. And most of the game has been played in the middle of the field. So 8.22 remaining second quarter. It's third and eight from the 45. Moore in the shotgun, looking to throw down the field. He's got a rush coming, trying to get out of it. He's going to get sacked. Coming in there and making the sack is 52, Gabe Few. And I'll tell you what, Few is a beast out there. Yeah, I should have mentioned his name earlier. I take that back. No, it's no, not no, Few. No. Kylan Mays, right, excuse right. me. Mays, I was reading the wrong side again. Yeah, I should have mentioned Mays' name earlier because he's been very solid on that defensive line. So Kleinert will be in to punt. Grove is standing on their own 20-yard line. Foot into it, high punt. Coming down, catches made at the 20. Still running as the defense comes swarming in and not able to get very far. That was Barraza that... Yeah, and I mentioned return Bra the punt. Braz was leading the led the N10 and uh, punt return yardage, and uh, I'm sure again Colonel Crawford knows that and they scouted that very well and made sure their punt coverage is very good. So Grove will have it first and ten at their own 24 yard line. 7:32 remaining here, second quarter. Seven nothing Eagles. And this game has really been between the middle of the field, basically between the 25s. Yeah, that was a good punt that time by Colonel Crawford to get a little bit deeper. One back in the backfield, trips here on the near side, one wide out on the far side. This will be a run up the middle. Just very, very that's little. That's Barraza. They've had, they've had trouble against this Crawford defense, either on the side or up the middle. Yeah, defense you, has just been really good. Yeah, and you take a look at number 65, big number 65, Eli Brewer in there. He wasn't in on that stop, but he's a take. He's a man in there. So Grove will have it second and nine from the 25. Trips here on the near side, one on the far, back in the backfield. Quick throw. Catch is made. That is Hawker, and Hawker will get immediately tackled right on the sideline and that again coming in that was 32 we talk about him on the offensive line but matt kleinert on the defense came in and blew that one up you know that's one of the things you know too you know at this level of play you see so many players playing both ways and why not you're going to use your best athletes yep they're not tired trust me they like they get a break every now and then third and five grove desperately needs a first down renner looks to throw down the sideline and it's dropped he had a man open, and that was intended for number six, Zach Reynolds, and Crawford was in there very quickly to make the stop. I don't know if he anticipated the contact or what, but uh, coming in there to blow that one up was Derek Horsley of Colonel, Colonel Crawford. So another fourth down, another punt for uh, Grove. So let's see what uh, Crawford can do with this one. They blocked the last punt. That one's a low punt. Boy, almost hit again. 
Grove will chase it down. And that's going to take a very favorable bounce to Columbus Grove, and they're going to down it at the 24. Very good roll. You know, I go back to that uh, defensive series by Colonel Crawford. Boy, you look at those guys up front on that, on that defensive line. You know, Jacob, Jacob Moss, Eli Brewer, I mentioned, Isaiah Studer. I'll tell you what, they're a force on that inside, and you can just tell they're just driving the offensive lineman back. And the other one to mention there is Parker Ketterman, yes. 36 yeah. tackles for loss and seven sacks, first team all league. Yeah, I didn't even mention him. So let's see what Crawford does here with this possession. They start at their own 24-yard line. Grove's defense wants to get a stop here. It's first and 10. Lohr throws to the left side. Catch is made and immediately hit. It is good for about a yard. And anytime you have a pass to Kleiner that only goes a yard, you consider that fortunate defensively. Barraza and Schrader out there making that hit right away. Barraza shows him up or slows him up. Because I tell you what, if those guys weren't there and Kleiner gets the outside, yeah. you know, he's going to get some big yardage there. Instead, he got one. Makes it second and nine. Trips far side. One back in the backfield with Lore. Grove looks like they're going to show blitz, and then they back off of it. Coming in, looked like uh, A.J. Schaefer was going to get in there with a blitz. If I'm not mistaken so far. The longest play I've seen from scrimmage so far has been, I was going to say 11 yards. <laughs> but now it's yeah. uh, it's been surpassed yeah. as yeah. Lore has it. And I'll tell you what, they did a good job picking that up because A.J. Schaefer was in on blitz. He was on the yeah. end, but then he moved to the middle and came through that line, and Lore able to outrun him right there. Yeah, just overshot it, you know. About an 18-yard pickup, I think. And I was just getting ready to say, you know, with the solid defense by everybody, you know, there's been no gain more than 11 yards until that. Pickup of 18, that makes it first and 10 on the 44. Crawford looks to the sideline. They've got a single receiver here on the outside nearest to us. Two backs in the backfield with Lohr. Lohr barks out the signals, has it, hands off. Run in the corner. That's Kleinard, and he will pick up a couple of yards. Kleinard's worked for every single yard. He has. He's averaging 6.3 yards uh, per carry, and he has definitely not got that tonight. Yeah, when we watched him on film, you know, that, you know, holes were open a little bit more. I mean, nothing against their opponent's off or defensive line, but, you know, right now it's just hard to find an open hole. The other thing with Kleinert is he's very unselfish, and he yeah. likes to open holes for other guys too. Yeah. If you have him leading, that's, that's quite a force. Quarterback keeper, Lore, gets another couple of yards, and... They're doing it in small chunks right now as yeah. Columbus Grove, or uh, Colonel Crawford, excuse Very me. Very manageable for them right now. It's second, or, uh, third, I think. Is third and five. Third and five, third and six, maybe. Here, Ball's at the 49. Third and the long five, I guess. Ball is just on this side of the 50 at the 49. The line to gain is Grove's 46. Now they've got... Three receivers bunched on the near side. There's nobody on the short side, and it looks like we're going to get a timeout for Colonel Crawford, and they want to talk about it. Don't forget Season 18 of Sports Report. Join Patrick Hamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around all season long Fridays at 10 on WTLW. Going to take a timeout. It's 7-0 Crawford here on WOSN. Back on WOSN from Donnell Stadium, it is... Colonel Crawford, seven. Columbus Grove, nothing. Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass, third and five for Crawford. And they're looking for a Dale's concrete first down right here. Lohr has it. Rolls to his right. Deep. Throws down the field. Catches made. And immediately a hit by Grove on the sideline. So that was a long throw, but basically it was a yard of reception yes. when you look at that. And a great hit by A.J. Schaefer. So this will bring up fourth down, and Colonel Crawford doesn't want to go to for it right at the 50. So they're going to punt it away. But Kleinert is their punter, so I didn't see anything on the film we watched about any fakes or anything, but anytime you got a guy like that, could happen. Kleinert puts a foot into it. This is a nice punt. It will drive the receiver back, and this will actually roll into the end zone, and so that will be a touchback. Nice punt. Great punt. So Columbus Grove will get at their own 20-yard line. About a 52-yarder, I think. Yeah. So let's see what uh, Columbus Grove can do here. They've had a lot of trouble so far this 
this half. I'm going to take a look at the, grab those stats from you real quick because I think in the first quarter they didn't have a first down. They had two, excuse me. It was, it was not very many. <laughs> so it'll be first and ten. Ball's at the 20. We've got the Grove fans right in front of us, and they are imploring their team to go. Twins here on the near side and on the far. One back in the backfield. Renner pitches. Full head of steam going forward, and that is uh, Shep Hawker on the, actually that was Barraza as he came around. Yeah, that's, you know, trying to get it out to him in space. Giving him some room, you know, a quick pitch. Grove looking to move quickly here. Want to get a score before the end of the half, and they get the ball to start the second half. Renner has it. This will be a pitch the other way. Barraza, and he may actually lose a yard on that one. That one just looked slow to develop. Yeah, it did. He's coming from the right side of him and just took him a little bit of time to get there. Again, you look at that solid defensive line of Colonel Crawford. His forward progress gave him a yard ahead, so it's really third and two now. Twins on the near side, which is the short side, and one on the far side, back in the backfield. They'll hand to Barraza again. Barraza dragging a guy, and he's real close to a first down. He, if he's short, he's real short. Yeah, I think it depends where they mark. I think they're going to mark him short a little bit. Grove's probably going to take it. Nope, they're giving it to him. Wow, they just gave it to him. Huh? That was close. So they've got it at the 31-yard line. And they're up to the line ready to go. So there's a Dales Concrete first down. Looking to throw. Renner lets it go, and it was intended for Barraza here on the right side and just too tall. And that was probably good that it was incomplete because he would have been tackled right there unless he would have evaded him, but um, it was covered well. Two defenders right there for Colonel Crawford. Well, I'll bring up second and ten, and the Bulldogs were looking to move kind of quick in that last drive, they were, or the last uh, series there. They were trying to, to get quick plays, quick to the line, and not waste any time. Yeah, about a minute 50 left here in the first half. He's trying to go real quick and trying to catch Colonel Crawford from getting set and getting personnel changed. Renner has it, looking to, to uh, run, and Renner gets maybe two yards. Running was tough there. Well, I keep saying it, but there's just nothing easy. You know what, that was Landon Best, who's listed as their backup quarterback, and he is in at yes, quarterback right now. So I don't know what happened with uh, Renner while he's on the sideline. I'm trying to take a look and see if I can see him, and a timeout is called. Timeout. He's going back yeah. in. Okay, he is going back in. That's Colonel Crawford. I must have had an equipment issue or something. So we're going to take a timeout with him with a minute 29 remaining here. Second quarter, Crawford 7, Grove nothing. Back after this on WOSN. Back out on WOSN, Colonel Crawford 7, Columbus Grove nothing. Chris Malinga, Jerry Snodgrass here with you from Donnell Stadium. Love this facility here in Finley, Ohio. Brenner. Brenner has a guy on his hip. Now in motion is Stecksholdy. Renner looking to throw down the field. Catch is made on the sideline and close to a first down. See where they spot it. I think they've got to give that to him. Yep, I think you're right. That was in, that was Shep Hulker there on the sideline. Able to stop the clock by getting it out of bounds. Getting a series right now yeah. from Columbus Grove. They're starting to put some things together. Using the sideline to use the clock. They still have the timeout. I think they have three timeouts. Yep, they still have their three timeouts. Dale's now. concrete first down. Here's a handoff. Barraza bouncing off tackles and coming up with a big play there. Pickup of eight. I'll be right back up the line of scrimmage. And that wasn't Barraza. That was A.J. Schaefer. You yeah. talk about a dose of Barraza, and then they throw in a little sh chaser from Schaefer. Second and two. Looking to throw down the field. Renner across the middle. Catches made into the territory of Colonel Crawford, and that's, uh, Dan uh, excuse me, that was uh, Barraza that caught that one. That'll be another Dale's Concrete first down. You wanted to get out of bounds, but went down quick, but drove right back up to the line of scrimmage. Renner has it, looking to throw down the field. He'll get to the sideline, and catch is not made. That was A.J. Schaefer he's looking for. He just let him out of bounds. Oh, they still have their three timeouts left, too, so. You know, uh, Coach Schaefer said, you know, in, in pregame two, talking to him that, you know, uh, extra points and field goals may decide this game. And, That's you know, true. they're getting into field goal territory. They do have a good kicker. 
A ways to go yet, but still. Hawker has it. Left side, Schaefer. And Schaefer will drive forward down to the 35-yard line. Schaefer looked like he had a lot of room on that hole, but it closed quick. Grove sets up quickly. They're not going to waste the timeout as we're at 35 seconds. Low snap, looking to throw to the sideline. Catch is made by Hawker. They're trying to keep him in bounds, and yep. he will stay in bounds. So that'll be a quick timeout for Columbus Grove. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. The scoreboard tonight shows 7 0. Colonel Crawford in favor of Columbus Grove. 26 seconds to go here, second quarter. And Grove has made, put a nice little drive together. This drive started at their own 20 yard line, and now they're out to the uh, Colonel Crawford 28. So a good pickup here, and they're keeping the chains moving, getting a lot of first downs, and getting to the sidelines, uh, keeping that, that time. And still timeout, two timeouts left. And you know, even if they come out of this with a field goal, it's a, that's a big, big win for Columbus Grove. So it'll be first and 10 at the 27-yard line. Grove is lined up and ready to go already. <laughs> Crawford's still on the sideline <laughs> there. Grove knows what they want to do. Really, that timeout, I think, just to stop the clock. Oh, it was, yeah. And I think, too, you know, I think Columbus Grove has seen something like playing a little faster. Um, you know, it might be pretty good. Might be something they talk about at halftime. Back in the backfield is Schaefer. Trips on the far side. One receiver here on the near side. Renner has it, looking to throw down the field. Looking, looking, cross the middle, and a catch is not made. Shep Halker, again, was intended for him, and it just went off his fingertips. Yeah, just a little bit behind him. That makes it just a little bit tougher catch. I think you'll see this just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. He had to turn his body around. That's a tough catch. And he came all the way from the right side of the field to make that on that route because he was lined up here on the near side. Went all the way across the field, so nice route for him, just not able to put the catch together. 21 seconds to go here, second and 10. Really the only number that matters is the uh, time on the clock. Renner has it, looks to throw down the field. Pressure coming and he throws it incomplete. It went off of the back of one of the defenders and then the man is down. And he got hit, watch this. He just got, again, that defensive line, yeah, that's who I thought. Yep, he is that did Ketterman? get it. Yep, it is Coming. Ketterman. Oh, boy, is he a he is tough on that line. Both ways. So Columbus Grove on the incomplete pass. Clock stops. 17 seconds to go. That's the second big hit Ketterman's had on him. Low, low snap. Quick throw. Here's Barraza. Tries to get to the outside and he'll get to the 25-yard line. And Grove will call another timeout with 10 seconds left to go. They've got one more after this. And just not able to, they were moving pretty quickly, and that'll bring up fourth and eight. I don't know if they try a field goal from here. That'd be a 35, 42-yarder. Uh, well, if they use it right, they've still got another, you know, they've still got another play before they kick because they do have a timeout left. But it is fourth down. Oh, so They have to make down. a decision yeah, here. So we're going to take this timeout with them. It is the Eagles 7, Bulldogs nothing back after this on WOSN. Nice. Back out on WOSN, fourth and eight. Grove, uh, Needs a touchdown here. They at least need a first down with only 10 seconds left. Trips right. Yep, they've got five wide. <laughs> Let's see if the line can hold. Quick pressure coming, and Grove is going to lose it and be sacked. And the helmet came off. Wow, that was big time pressure, and Renner just didn't get rid of it fast enough. Yeah, when he's dropping back, you know, most of their success so far has been rolling out. Look at that. Look at the that. Ball. Just swarmed. And again, that number 53, Parker Ketterman, has seven sacks coming into this game, and the helmet came off with that one. So we go to halftime. It's Colonel Crawford 7, Columbus Grove nothing. Going to take a timeout. Come back with our halftime show after this. Halftime here at Donnell Stadium in Finley. Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass here as Colonel Crawford up 7 to nothing on the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. And, you know, I always ask my color guy what changes you would make at the uh, half. And so what changes would you make for both these two teams? Well, you know, if I were Columbus Grove, I think I think they are going to play a little faster. I think they're, you know, to not just get allow uh, Colonel Crawford to settle in a little bit, maybe no substitutions. Um, you know, I, I think they're going to throw some short routes a little bit more. 
Um, Columbus Grove, excuse me, Kirk Crawford has really, really shut down that inside run and really the run around the end. So I can see some short passes, you know, and just uh, chunking away at it. You know, if you're uh, Colonel Crawford, you know, I don't know. You know, I mean, their bread is like, like, I think they do well when they stick with their bread and butter, you know, pulling guards and, you know, getting four yards of crack. They kind of go away from it then and, you know, then they get themselves caught in third and short and then don't get it. So I don't know if there's a lot of changes to make. You know, it's just that, you know, as we talked about, the turnovers have done, you know, is a big thing, obviously. But I still think that the biggest story on this right now is a defensive line uh, of uh, Colonel Crawford. I mean, they're just, and they're just giving so much pressure to uh, Columbus Grove. Let's take a look at, you know, first at some stats. Well, first, the only score came with a block punt. So basically, Crawford blocked a punt from Columbus Grove. It rolled all the way down to the four-yard line, and they took it in on the first play oh, to make it 7 to nothing. But the, look at this, some stats here. Crawford has five first downs to Columbus Grove, six. Uh, they have, they're two of six from third down for 33%, four of nine for Columbus Grove, 44%. Neither team has converted a fourth down. They're both 0 for 1. Uh, Colonel Crawford is 18 of 67, or 18 rushes for uh, 67 yards, seven passing for uh, 27 yards, and they're six for seven for 86%, and only 88 offensive yards. But Columbus Grove has 14 rushing attempts for 44 yards. They have 15 passing attempts for 47 yards, and they're seven of 15 for 47%. Uh, Colonel Crawford's been sacked twice, two sacks for 14 yards. Columbus Grove one sack for 16. Columbus Grove has uh, been penalized twice for 16 yards. Colonel Crawford perfect, no penalties. And uh, the uh, average punt, uh, average punt for Colonel Crawford's 41 yards and 32 for Columbus Grove. Uh, time of possession 1360 for Colonel Crawford. So they chewed some time off the clock and only 960 uh, for uh, uh, for uh, Columbus Grove. And uh, Boy, uh, you know, that's just you're five a, possessions each. they pretty even. Yeah, and you know, I, but but given those statistics, I think Columbus Grove comes out and, you know, say, you're pretty confident, you know, for that matter. You know, they, they've not been dominating know, at all, take that at all, obviously. Or? They just need to plug Did away and get a score. Good official, you, you know, know taking a look, you know, if you I told you at halftime you'd have a 7 nothing lead and your leading back has 10 yards rushing, how Correct. do you feel about yeah. that? <laughs> and, that, and then, yeah. again, I think if you look at Colonel Crawford, you, or excuse me, if you look at Columbus Grove, you say that. You know, like, hey, listen, we've held them. Yep. Let's just execute better on the offensive end. And that comes with pass protection, too. Cameron Lohr is the leading rusher for uh, Crawford. He has uh, eight attempts for 55 yards and uh, and uh, basically has that four-yard touchdown. Uh, the leading rusher for uh, Cumulus Grove is A.J. Schaefer, seven attempts for 30 yards. And, uh, boy, just just kind of the uh, the stats are kind of uh, minimalistic, I, they say. I was going to say, are they boring? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good word. Yeah. That's a good word. So let's take a look at this bracket. Here's the top half of the bracket. This is uh, Colonel Crawford and Columbus Grove. This is, they go to the regional final. They're going to take uh, take a look at the bottom half of that bracket. They're going to play the winner uh, of uh, – has he got it up there? It didn't say. Okay, so they're going to play the winner of – got to pull it up now. Jerry, my uh, my brain is not working properly uh, as to who they, they're going to be playing if they win this game. They're going to play the winner of Crestview and yeah. Columbia Station, Columbia. Both those teams unbeaten this year. So that is uh, what we're playing for is a trip to the uh, the finals there. Right. And that's uh, it, it, that's very unique, too. You know, the the fact that, like, we've got in another division, we've got Macomb playing LCC tonight. I mean, you know, those schools are very close. But, you know, Northwest Ohio is very dominant of the Division seven, six and 7 schools. Yeah, so, absolutely. you know, you get in some of the other divisions where you've got these wide, you know, distances, especially – when you go to 16 teams in a region. Absolutely. Columbia Station, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's on the other side of Pennsylvania, so <laughs> it's not. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, if you're looking for a perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan, WOSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world online on Roku and Apple TV for a $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign on app.wosn.tv or by downloading the Roku and Apple TV apps. 
And uh, we're looking forward to this uh, this one to get started here for the second half and see what changes these two teams may have made. Yeah, it, it will be interesting to see, you know, because really when you talk about a defensive battle like this, you know, and neither team has dominated anything, you know, like, no, let's just go out and do what we do and do it better. All right, we're going to take a quick timeout back after this on WOSN. Back out here at Donnell Stadium, we head to the third quarter. It is the Colonel Crawford Eagles 7, Columbus Grove Bulldogs nothing. Today's game being brought to you by Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. And Hawker Drywall. Visit HawkerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. Columbus Grove gets the ball. They were driving late in the second quarter, just not able to get it into the end zone as they trail seven to nothing, but they will have the ball here to start the third quarter of play. And they were just a little outside of uh, field goal range at that time too. Catch is made at the 10 yard line. This is Hawker bringing it up. He's still on his feet. He'll get out to the 24 yard line. And that is where Columbus Grove will start at their own 24, actually the 25. I have this theory Gary this year that the officials are rounding up to the big lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see a ton of games where you think it's the 24 and immediately it's the 25. Right. You know, too, I, our, our viewers are probably checking a little bit of the snow. I know that a lot of this is a reflection, but uh, we had some pretty hard snow there at halftime. Yeah, absolutely. Right now, conditions good. Low snap, though, and this might be trouble. They hand off, and maybe it wasn't trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Barraza makes the carry and picks up about eight and a half yards. Uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, coming out at halftime, probably a little bit of uh, motivation given to that offensive line. Let's get out there and push people off. All right, so this is second and one. Ball's at the 34-yard line. This will be a quarterback keeper, and they're going to lose yardage. I don't know if that was a design I, keeper. No, or I, I think it was a broken play. I don't know if he fumbled the snap or what it was, but... I, don't, I think he was intending on handing that off and just was a little late with the result of the loss. Just about half a yard, though, so we're going to call it the 33. So third and one. And it looks like the precipitation is starting again out there. This is a handoff. Here's Barraza. He gets close to a first down. I think he got it. Second effort got him there. And if you can see on our TV screen right now, you can see some snow coming down. As our camera backs out, you can see it coming down here. And turf, obviously, a little bit going to perform a little bit differently than grass in this situation. You know, too, Chris, I live about two blocks from the stadium, and I am pretty sure that two days ago it was 75 degrees. Yeah, I think it was. A little misdirection there. Barraza has it, and they... Colonel Crawford defense stuffed that one out pretty quickly. It's just so difficult to move them on the, def the defensive line of Colonel Crawford. They're just so strong, so big. Ketterman and Look at Pugh. that. Yeah, just look at 57. Look at 67. Look at 53. 53 is Ketterman. Parker Ketterman. 6'2", yep. 215. Yeah. Big dudes. And, so and not, not just big, but you look at Ketterman and he's athletic. You know, he moves, moves fast. So this is second and 12, man in motion. Now they're going to throw. Renner looks down the field. Thro throw comes down, and oh, did he catch it? No, no they're going to say incomplete. came off the turf. It bounced up. That is intended for Zach Reynolds, who went out there and tried to catch that one. You're right, it just hit the turf. Reynolds has 24 receptions for 374 yards on the season. Just not able to haul that one in, and it's third and long. That's the first time that they've gone deep and had time to throw it. Maybe that offensive line giving a little bit more time or Crawford stepping back and knowing in a long down situation, maybe they're going to pull the pressure off a little bit. Or a little extra motivation at halftime. Yeah. <laughs> Third and 12. Renner has it. Roland was right, throws to his left. Catch is made on the sideline and going to be short of the first down. He slid towards the first down, but he didn't get there. I think that's A.J. Schaefer. Wow, they're marking that up pretty far. Wow, I thought he was at least a yard or two back from that. I don't, see, I don't think I've ever been on a game where there's been so many marked right at the spot. I, I think he's about half yard. No, they're, they're giving, giving it to him. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. I thought he was a couple short when he slid. So there's another Dale's first down. Dale's Concrete sponsor in that first down. 
So that makes it first and 10 ball at the 46 yard line. Grove moving it. Pitch to Barraza. Crosses the 45 and will get up to the 48. Just nothing has been there around that outside. They've had trouble running the ball tonight. Yeah, you take a look too at Trevor Vote, you know, who came up and made that stop. Yeah, he's a he's a player. Yeah. He plays that safety position, a wide receiver on the offense. I talked to the Colonel Crawford's basketball coach today, and he said he had one player at practice. They all play football. <laughs> they all play football. Here's a big break, and Barraza gets out close to another first down. He's going to be about a yard and a half short. Which, well, up third down. Which, you know, while we're waiting on this next play, I should really emphasize that too. You know, I mean, in small schools you rely on it, but, you know, kids have one chance in high school to play all the sports they can get, and if they can do it, play it. Absolutely. Not, don't need to specialize this no. early. So doubles on the far side, one wide out here on the near side. Back in the backfield and a tight end. Renner changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Barks out the signals. He has it. Here's Barraza running forward, ran right into that defensive Nowhere. line. Nowhere to go. Wow, you mentioned it earlier about the defensive line, and they have shown up tonight. Yeah, good replay here. We're going to see him just go right into the heart of that offensive and defensive line and go nowhere. That'll bring up fourth and two. Grove looking to keep the offense on the field now. And you can hear the crowd. Tristan Baker was in on that too and brought him up from the defensive back. It's gonna be a throw off to the side. Barraza, it is out of his reach. It would have been a first down if he caught it, but that was just not thrown well. Well, you know what? That, that was a good idea, you know, throwing back. But you look, too, at the pressure that he's getting right now, especially from Jacob Moss, just chasing him down. He just had no chance and just, you know, he didn't throw it away, but he just made sure it couldn't get intercepted. That'll be a turnover on downs for Columbus Grove, so Colonel Crawford will have it at their own 46-yard line. I mentioned earlier about Moss, Eli Brewer, Isaiah Studer, and again, on that play, all three are chasing uh, Renner down. So Cam Lohr comes back out for the quarterback. He has the one touchdown for Colonel Crawford. Got a receiver on each side and a back in the backfield, tight end as well. Looking to throw, he throws deep, double covered. Grove will come in, will he make the catch? Nope. Nope, falls out. Number 13, Antonio Gray. We called his name a couple of times tonight. And again, he was up and nearly made an interception. Yeah, he there. had time, good pass, jump ball here. I think he's going to come down with it, but that was a very, very good defensive play that time. Uh, you know, on Colonel Crawford, or excuse me, um, the Columbus Groves part, Antonio Gray did a great job back there. Well, and Voigt was the intended receiver and Voigt ended up breaking up, basically. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was playing defense on Gray. All right, so second and 10. Got exciting there for a second. This is a handoff. Kleiner will come forward, and he will get maybe a yard. He's thrown backwards. Boy, give the Grove defense credit on that. Todd Cook comes into that. A.J. Schaefer. I tell you what, A.J. Schaefer, the more I watch this kid play, he's a beast. Yeah, he is. Third and nine. I remember watching him last year even, and he just was just one of those guys you want on your team. Plays 100% all the time. Never seems to tire. Lohr has it. This will be a keeper. Lohr will get good yardage. Boy, he has a burst of speed, doesn't he, when he gets a little bit of a hole? Yeah, he does. We haven't seen him carry that like that here for you know quite a few plays, quite a few series here. That was their bread and butter quite yep. a bit. That'll bring up fourth down. It looks like Crawford's going to punt. Matt Plinner is the punter as well. Has a foot into it. Nice punt. It is a nice punt. Barraza will catch at the 20. Out to the 25, to the 30, to the sideline. And he will get out to the 35-yard line. And maybe a couple past that. He gets out to the 37. Yeah, but nice a, running. Yeah, about a 17-yard return on that punt. You can see why he is the leading um, punt returner. All right, so Grove will have it again. 6:40, third quarter, down seven. Going to take a quick timeout. Back after this on WSN.
Back out on WOSN. Columbus Grove takes over, trailing seven to nothing. Ball's at their own 37 yard line. It's a quarterback keeper. Nope, it was a direct snap to Barraza. Oh wait, that wasn't Barraza. That no. was number two, landed best. He came in at quarterback again. We saw that in the first half. Yeah. A direct snap to him and a run. You know, everybody wants a late hit on that, but he was hit inbounds, I think, right in the edge. And, you know, he just, the momentum took him out over the player's bench. All right, so Best is in at quarterback yep. still. Calls out. Now he'll run to the right side. To the sideline, he'll pick up a couple more. And in clear as Best is a, a running quarterback. He likes to run first. Yeah, I think that's becoming a little obvious there. Yeah. That'll make it second and four. And I've not seen them, you know, maybe I missed it, but I hadn't seen him use him in previous games like that. But He uh, was on the two deep. Yes, yep, you're right. But, but didn't see him in any of the film of the games I watched. So this will be third and four. Trips on the far side, one here on the near side, a back in the backfield. Best pitches. This is Sha Schrader, or Schaefer, excuse me, and Schaefer gets up and close to a first down. I think he has yeah, it. Yeah, they gave him a very, very good spot. Generous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you watch him, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you watch him where he's down, and I think they gave him a very, very good spot. And we've got an injured Grove player on the field there. Don't know if that was Schaefer or if Schaefer's up. Yeah. I'm trying to get a number. Yeah, he's got a cramp. I think they're just trying to get the, work the cramp out. So 6.25 remaining here, third quarter. Going to take a timeout with the injury. 7-0 Eagles back after this on WSN. Back on WSN, A.J. Schaefer is up. You thought he might have a cramp after that first down run. That's a first down sponsored by Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Chris Malanga, Jerry Snodgrass here at Donnell Stadium. It's first and 10. Columbus Grove at their own 48-yard line. They trail 7-0 to these Crawford Eagles. And a couple first downs here. Good drive by Columbus Grove. They have it, pitch. This is Barraza. Comes toward the 50, goes up the sideline into Crawford territory, and he will get another first down at the 40 yard line. Big pickup there, that's a pickup of uh, 18. Yeah, they're having a lot of success right now. <laughs> you know, with uh, Best in there at quarterback, and you know, the quick pitch right, quick pitch left. He himself taking taking the ball and running. We'll probably see that right now. He'll probably, I would look for him to keep it this time. Trips, he'll go to the right side and he will pick up a couple yards before being shoved out of bounds. It's always interesting to me when teams line up three receivers on the wide side of the field and then yeah. the quarterback runs to the short side. That uh, shows you how much deception is yep. part of the game. Absolutely. All right, he's going to lose about a half a yard on that. We're still going to say the 40, but it's on the other side of the 40. Second and 10. Twins here on the near side, back in the backfield with the quarterback, who is Landon Best. Best will have it. The rolls to his left, being pursued, and he will just dive, and Crawford makes a good defensive play there. You know, watching him on that, I, I, I would tell you that's a broken play. I think he was looking to his right to pitch. And it was a little slow then getting around to the left side. Lost another yard, and so it'll make it third and 12. So Columbus Grove was r moving pretty good. Yes. So just after they got in this side of Colonel Crawford, 50. It has now been tough going. Yeah, all of a sudden third and long. Best still in at quarterback. We've he's got Schaefer with him. Yeah, we've not seen best throw yet, so. He's got Barraza now. Schaefer lines up as a tight end, and we're going to get a timeout. I think we've got a delay of game. Oh, we do have a delay of game. You're right. Delay I'll of take game. it five back. Offense. Yeah. That's Five-yard penalty. Good catch Still there, Gary. That, um, that hurts. You know, now, you know, you, you, you're third and 11, you're, you're okay, you can get it. You know, third and 16, I don't know. All right, so let's see what Grove does here. And I said earlier about flipping the field, they don't get this, you know. Maybe if they pin Colonel Crawford deep. 
Best has it, looks down the field. Now he'll keep it right up the middle. Look at this, still on his feet, close to a first down. But he's gonna be short. Well, and they're probably, you know, here they're on the 34 yard line. Maybe they're you go for gotta it. Gotta probably be four down territory for them. Probably fourth and four. And the snow is really starting to come down now. You can actually see it on the TV even thicker. Don't see it so much in front of us looking out the press box windows. Where it's warm. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling to his right, quick throw, ah. and he was hit as he threw, and that's going to be incomplete. And Best took a shot as he released that ball. That's been probably the, the story of their passing game right now. They just have not had clean looks from the quarterback spot. They really haven't. The, the Crawford's done a great job yeah. of coming in and swarming, and it's not just one guy. It's two and three every yeah, time. It's good speed on the defensive line by, by Colonel Crawford, and you know every pass is rushed and on the run. All right, so Crawford will take over on downs. They'll have it at their own 34-yard line with a 7-0 lead. Now let's see what Crawford wants to do now with 429 remaining here, third quarter. I think this is a big uh, big series for Colonel Crawford. If they can score, they can drive down and score. I think, you know, that really gives them some cushion. But, hey, right away the Grove defense stiffens. Yep, Lohr kept that one, and Grove came up big time, 52 yeah, and he's Kylan, hurt. Kylan Mays. We've called his name a couple of times, and now he's hobbling off. So they'll run in number 76, Connor Douglas, to replace him. Yeah, I don't know if he can. Boy, that's. He was very slow getting up on that. I think he's trying to do the best he can to get off the field. But All right, he's off. Let's see if he's going to sit down here and they'll take a look at it. This makes it second, it's still second and 10. About nine and a half. Moore, the quarterback, he has a back at his hip, now a man in motion. He will hand on the jet sweep. Nice hurdle and big pick up there. And that was number five, Trevor Vogt. Look at this hurdle right here. Yep, Vogt has it on the jet sweep and whoop. Yep. Right over the guy. Used to not be legal. That's true. It is now legal. You know, I'm a Brian guy, and I remember Austin Schimler, oh, one yes. of those guys, yeah. one of those guys that used to like to hurdle and wasn't allowed to do it back when he played in 2012. Yep. That was one of those. If you were coaching at the time, some of those plays, why can't we? You know, <laughs> if I have the skill to do it. They watch at the pros all the time. All right, double receivers here at third and four, on the far side of tight end here on the near side. And that was a whole mess, and we're going to get it. Was it a timeout or a false start? I believe it's a timeout. It's going to be a timeout, Colonel Crawford. Okay, so timeout. 314 remaining here, Colonel third Crawford. quarter. Eagles continue to lead Before the seven snap, to nothing. They're first. And uh, check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings. For more sports and teams than anyone in the state, check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WSN.TV, you know, everybody thinks football season, but they've got soccer, you know, playoffs happening, volleyball state championship happening, yeah. and pretty soon it's gonna be inside for basketball season. Yes, and I was fortunate enough to attend in Marion County today down in the city of Marion. Uh, I used to coach in that area, one of the county schools, and they resurrected the Coliseum at Marion and had kind of a throwback, you know, they wanna really start having some games there. Very nostalgic. Uh, a lot of old timers there. I guess I'm one of those now, but a lot of those <laughs> old timers there reminiscing about a lot of things. That was really, really well received by the people there. So it's basketball season too. Absolutely. And, and you can tell by looking at the sky right now. <laughs> and you talk about Crawford only having one guy for for basketball season so far. Yes. You know, and two. Uh, Kylan Mays is still out. You know, he's only a sophomore, but 230 pounds. They can ill afford to keep him off the line. Laura will make a, a throw and catch is made. Big that first down. Boat, and it'll be a first down by Dale's Concrete. Called Dale's Concrete and Decorative, decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. A Hunker Drywall uh, scoreboard says Crawford 7, Columbus Grove nothing. And Crawford close to Columbus Grove territory. They have it first and 10. Here's a handoff, and boy, stopped right at the line. That's Kleinert. And whew, 
Columbus Grove was all over that one. Yes. Good, good uh, rush that time by the defensive line of Columbus Grove. About a half yard loss on that one. And the snowflakes coming down right now are just big snowflakes. Yes. It's starting to, yeah. you can see it on the field. You can. Moore will hand off. Kleiner will follow a blocker and he will get to the 50, so pickup of about three. I think that run says it all. I mean, right there. I mean, you know, he's digging and pushing and he's a strong running back and he gets two yards. I mean, that's, yep. that's just what this game has been. Look at that. So that makes it, they only gave him a yard. Yeah. And so that gives them third and eight. Todd Cook right there on the stop. The winter wonderland right now. Lohr has it, looks to throw down the field, and he gets hit as he throws. and Almost be, intercepted. Ooh, who came in there to do that? That's what I'm just Number looking. seven, that was. Yeah, <laughs> who else? That was him again, A.J. Schaefer. He's done it all yeah. tonight. Watch as he just plays that very, very well. A lot of pressure that time, too. Oh, I take that back. That wasn't him. That no, was 20. Yeah, yeah. That was number 20, uh, Shep Halker. So it's fourth and eight. Crawford looks like they're going to punt. Feinert is their punter. One return man back. That's Halker. Foot into it. Catch is made at the 15-yard line. Out to the 20. To the sideline, 25-30. 35-40, knocked out of bounds, and that was Barraza. Boy, he's, he does a nice job on this, juking a little bit there, finding the crease. That'll be first down Bulldogs. Dale's Concrete, your first down sponsors tonight. Tight ropes along that right sideline. He might have had a lot more to go. Minute 27 remaining here, third quarter. Grove trails seven to nothing on the Huckle Drywall scoreboard. Renner looks to be back in a quarterback. No, he's not. Catch is made. That's some wide open space right there. Up the sideline and into Crawford territory. That's number six, Zach Reynolds. Coming up big time right there. Biggest play of the night for Columbus Grove. Biggest play we've seen all, all night long. And he Good. just caught that basically at the line of scrimmage in the last yards after catch. Yeah, give Reynolds a lot of credit for hauling that thing in. That makes it first and 10 at the 34 of Crawford. Now they've got double receivers on the near side, one on the far side, back in the backfield. Best still your quarterback. He has it. Nope, they confused nope. me again. Yep. Handoff. This is Reynolds the other way, and Reynolds this time can't get more than a couple of yards, and the quarterbacks keep fooling me as yeah. Renner rolled back in. Yep, a lot of running to get nowhere, but. I don't know that that was exactly the design play no. right there, don't you think? It I looked like they might have wanted to go to Barraza. Right. He got a yard, or half a yard. We'll still call it second and 10 as the third quarter quickly coming to a close. Well, trips out to the left again. and Renner has it, looks to throw down the field. He's got, got a wide open guy. Catch is made in for the touchdown. Again, Zach Reynolds. Wow. You know, give Renner a ton of credit. Watch this. He's... You know, he's back there. The first time he's really had time. Broken coverage that time by Colonel Crawford. Catch was made at the 10-yard line, and the rest of that was Zach Reynolds in for the score. So that makes it 7-6. to six. And Columbus Grove seems to come alive at the end of quarters. Yes, and, you know, <laughs> a lot of credit to Zach Reynolds for not only that, but the one previous where he hauled it in and got the big gain to get him in scoring position. Jeff Halker is your kicker. And this is important right now because this will tie it. Kick is up, and it is through. So with 36 seconds remaining third quarter, the Humper Drywall scoreboard says 7-7. Crawford and Grove back after this. On back here on WOSN, Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass. Columbus Grove just had a 35-yard touchdown pass from Brenton Renner to Zach Reynolds for the score to tie things up here. 
Colonel Crawford at seven, Columbus Grove seven. You know, the other thing I saw, you know, on that Shep Hawker's extra point looked like it went down another county from here. <laughs> so, and I talked earlier about Andy Schaefer saying that extra points and field goals could very well be the difference. Well, and Grove comes in and blows up that kickoff return. That was number eight for Colonel Crawford that was on that kickoff return, and that is Caden Bruner. And that, I tell you what, Grove came in big time and blew that up, and Crawford's going to start at their own 18-yard line. You sense a little momentum shift you here do. going into the end of the third to heading into the fourth. And also, you know, you look at Grove. They did that via the pass on that series. And, um, you know, I think that's what they've just found. All right, let's see what the uh, Crawford Eagles can do here. Cam Lohr's your quarterback. He's got two backs with him. Looks like Crawford's showing blitz. That's a handoff to Kleiner, and he will come forward and pick up short yardage. Gets out to the 21, so a pickup of three. Trader comes in and makes the tackle. See if they get a play off this quarter yet. Looks like they want to. Yep. Play clock is off. Looking to throw. Down the sideline. Catch is made. And big hit right there on the sideline. Trying to get a number on that one. You see Lore right here with the throw. Good protection. And that is over on the sideline to 19. That is. Where's 19? That's Ryan, Ryan McMichael. McMichael. Yep. He slid off my sheet. He's on my sheet, but not where I thought it was. So at the end of the third quarter of play, all tied up here from Findlay's Donnell Stadium. Going to take a timeout. The Hawker Drywall scoreboard 7-7. Back after this on WSN. Welcome back to Donnell Stadium, a snowy winter wonderland here. It is 7-7 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Chris Malanga, Jerry Snodgrass with you. 7-7. Colonel Crawford has it. And they run into the Columbus Grove line right there for a very short gain. Well, they were really crowding up all, everybody in the box that time. You could tell, unless they audible, they weren't going any. Colonel Crawford wasn't going anywhere. That's Kleiner that had the carry. And yards for him have been very hard to come by. He's averaging 6.3. And I don't know if he's had any uh, runs of six yards tonight. You know, I should also mention that Kylan Mays is back in. You know, we saw him come out with an injury there a little bit ago, the five or the 230-pound uh, sophomore defensive lineman. Here's a pitch. And picking up a couple of yards, Tanner Dyer. Haven't called his name much tonight, but Dyer back. He was averaging 7.8 a, a uh, game and nine touchdowns, but he's been quiet so far. So this makes it third and four. Big number Todd Cook out there, 6'3", 240-pound defensive lineman, senior that anchors that defensive line right there on top of that. Crawford has it. One wide out here on the near side. It looks like they're going to try to run the football. Now they got a man in motion. This is a handoff. Kleiner is stopped in after just about a yard gain. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that was Todd Cook that made that initial hit. And, and that was really, Micah Thomas, the yep, uh, yep. running back. Really slowed him up. So this is fourth and two, and it looks like Crawford is going to punt. They've got Kleiner lined up to punt. Back to return for Columbus Grove is Barraza. They're going to get good field position. They are. Good punt. Barraza's driven back. He'll catch inside the 20. He'll come to his left, cross the 20. Now he's going wide and takes four guys to tackle him. And I don't know, he may have been better just to field that on a fair catch. Yeah, well, you know, not only that, but, you know, I talked about good field position, but right there was a great punt and great coverage that kept them from getting really good field position. And we talked about that in the pregame a little bit about how you can flip the field on this yep. with punting. Yep. That's why, you know, the don't over and ever underemphasize the importance of a kicking game. So 17 is the line of scrimmage, their own 17. Grove will come out again. The last time they had the football, they scored, and they did it through the passing game. And now they've got trips on the far side, one wide out here on the near side, one back in the backfield. High snap, pitch to Barraza. Barraza will get to the 15, out to the 20, 
and he will be stopped right there. And they're going to give him the 21. Yeah, the offensive line just getting a little bit more push, it seems like, this half. Nice move there to and get out there. Yeah, and they're also realizing, I don't think they're going to have a, a lot of success running into the heart of that defensive line. Ketterman in there that just makes it so difficult. He got five on that one. It didn't look like he went yeah, for didn't. five, but he got five. Grove has it, second and five. Looking to his left, looking to throw. Chucks it down the field into got traffic, it. and does he have it? Nope, dropped no, it. No, he dropped it. I think the problem, there are, two, there are two offensive receivers in the same spot there that just made it difficult. Good pass. And they wanted, the Grove fans wanted pass interference. There were just two defenders there. I don't know that he got interfered with. No. But that'll take it all the way back, third and five. Can you run that replay again there, Tony? I want to see if there was any extracurriculars any. here. We're going to get a good view of it. Here it is. Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> there was a little of a shove there. Yeah. Third and five. The snow's coming down real hard now. Grove has it. It's a run. And short and I think of the he's first got, down. Now I think he's got it. Does he? That was A.J. Schaefer, and we've called his name a lot. If he doesn't have it, he's awful close. Yep. They're going to move it. You're good, good eyes there, Jerry. Yeah. Because I got my glasses at <laughs> halftime. <laughs> All right. They got out to the 28-yard line where it'll be first and 10. That is another Dale's Concrete first down. Double receivers on the near side. Now they'll make it trips. I, I think. I was going to say, I think they were a little confused on the formation, but down to five on the play clock. Renner has it, looks to throw down the field. He throws down the middle of the field, and it's going to be overthrown. Barraza got held up just a little bit by the defense, and that makes it second and ten. I like the home run ball on first and ten, yeah. though. Yeah, and I think you know that they also have a lot more confidence to be able to do that. I think they're a lot more confident now that, hey, listen, we've got three other downs. We'll, we'll do all right. 8.37 here, fourth quarter. I think that's the biggest thing coming into this half is you've seen such, you know, so much more confidence, I think, out of Columbus Grove. I think Colonel Crawford beat him up a little bit on the first quarter. Yeah. They came out and smashed him in the mouth a little bit. That's a low snap on the ground. That'll get picked up and go nowhere. And that was Renner doing everything he could to make a play after the drop snap. Yeah, you know, that's not a turnover, but at the same time, you know, that's – just a mistake that you can't have. He only lost a yard on that. That looked like it was going to be a lot worse than. Yeah, it did. So he did a good job of getting back. Actually, he's back to the original line of scrimmage. So that makes it third and ten. He did a good job of getting the ball back. Yep, absolutely. So third and ten now. Ball's on the 28-yard line. Another low snap. Has to pick it up, and he's going to take. Oh, He's going to try to yeah. get away. I thought he was going to take a I shot from the first guy thought, through. He didn't see him, and I thought I thought he was just going to get pummeled. I thought that was Ketterman again yes. coming in and going to pound him. Yeah. Look at this, on the ground again. Ketterman comes up and then gets blocked out. Oh, big yeah. block there by Kalen Mays. We yes. talked about him a lot. Mays saved his quarterback from getting absolutely creamed. So this Boy. will be a punt. A lot of credit to Mays on that. Now, Jerry, I'll point out on this punt, this is about on the field where their block was. Yes, it was. And that was how the Eagles took a 7 nothing lead. So let's see if they put an extra protector out there. And they've struggled with a snap here in the last three or four plays. They have. And that one comes out clean. He could have gotten it, I think. And that'll bounce in. They'll let that roll. That'll roll inside the 40-yard line to the 39. That would so have been a hard one to field, but at the same time, you know, by not fielding that, that's an extra 10, 12 yards. Absolutely. So, Jane's in possession. The Halker Drywall scoreboard says 7-7. Seven to, to seven. Tonight's scoreboard sponsors Halker Drywall and plastering, plastering. Visit us at HalkerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. Well, we'll see here with sevens are wild. 7-7 seven, seven with seven minutes left in the game. And you can see the field now looks <laughs> white. Yeah. The and snow you know, is coming down. Artificial or not. It's still slippery. It is. You know, and you, you see that. It's a wet snow, and it just makes it slick. All right, first and 10, Crawford at their own 39-yard line. Now they move guys in motion, shift the back from the right to the left. 
Lohr will go to his left, he'll keep it, and wow. he will be dropped for a loss. So and Lohr, I believe it was Todd Cook again. Todd Cook has just got his name called the whole time. Yeah, look at him get through. Oh, right Whoa. there. Whoa. Comes in from that linebacker position. That's why I said at the start of the year, you know, Coach Andy Schaefer was so high on his linebackers, and I can see why. Well, Cook is the defensive player of the year in the Northwest Conference, and he was first team all league both on offense and defense. Yeah, when you're 6'3", 240, <laughs> playing that linebacker spot and have movement. Lore looks back to throw, throws to the side. Sliding attempt is no good, and that was intended out for uh, Jacob Maddy. And just unable to haul it in. That's what's making it tough, too. You know, both teams, you know, passing is just not the the way of the game right now with the weather conditions. And, you know, just load up the box and try to make people run. And, and you can see right at about the 49-yard line where they yeah. slid trying to come in and make that tackle or make that catch. So 620, and we'll see who, who bends here and who can take advantage as we're in a 7-7 to tie. Trips here on the near side, one on the far side. Now a man goes in motion. Looking to throw down the field again. Big time throw. Let's see if a guy's open. And that one could have been potentially right. pass interference, but they let that one go as well. As in coverage, that was 20 Sheb Halker. And also Zach Reynolds on that. Very, very good coverage on that. Right there. Yep. So that'll bring up fourth and 11. And another punt opportunity. Both these teams averaging about 30 points a game. And we've got a 7-7 tie. Punt in the air. Oh, it's blocked. Almost blocked. Almost blocked. I don't know how he missed that. And that'll get downed yep. on the 20-yard line. Now, if he got a, a piece of it, there wouldn't be a penalty marker, so there's no penalty marker. Yeah. So that must mean they got a piece yeah, of it. It looked like I thought he was going to just. I thought he was going to get the same kind of block we had earlier in the game. So that'll flip the field, and Grove has it now. They're going to see. Got it first and ten. Let's see where they spot it. They got it at the twenty-five right now. Yeah. So let's see what Grove can do. Somebody's got to score here. That was a big punt that time by Colonel Crawford, you know, change the field position, you know, switch the field like that. Especially with Grove coming after it. Yes. So Grove has it, first and 10 at their own 25, 6.05 remaining here. Zach Reynolds out here to the left. Got one receiver on the far side too. Man in motion, misdirection. And this is Barraza going forward and picking up big yardage. Like the misdirection there in the backfield. Yeah, you know, and I mentioned earlier, almost at the start of the game, about Barraza and his quick hitting to the hole. And, boy, he just went right through there. And defense uh, or offensive line did a good job of making players miss and getting some holes open. And, again, the guy we've been calling all night long, Cook. Second and four. 538 remaining. Grove fumbled snap. And they'll fall on it. That's about the fourth time that's happened here late in the game. You know, I mentioned at the start of the game, too, that Colonel Crawford has had a hard time holding on to the ball. They haven't. It's actually been Colonel Crawford, or excuse me, Columbus Grove here that struggled with that. So that makes it third and eight. 5-17 remaining here. In the game, we got a tie game. Seven apiece on the Hunkel Drywall scoreboard. Twins here on the near side, one receiver on the far side, a back in the backfield, and a tight end. Renner has it. Looks to throw, quickly throws out, and that is going to be almost intercepted. Oh, my goodness. I bet they want that one over again. Sitting up here, we watched this. I could just see it developing. That He's looking. He's going to start looking, looking, and he has to float it because of that pressure on him defensively. And coming in, I'm trying to get the number on that. Was that not... Excuse me, 19? McMichael. I think that's Ryan McMichael. That put the pressure on. That almost yeah, had yeah. the interception. The, the pressure, you know, defensively was the key to that, I think. So he had to throw it off his back foot. Trading three and outs now. Low punt snap. Kick is away. It's going to be a short kick. It'll down at the 50, and then they'll pick it up at the 41. 
and sliding down at the 40. And that is where Colonel Crawford will take over their own 40-yard line. The snow is falling here at Finley. Well, 4.41 left in the game, and talked about flipping the field a little bit, but, you know, that puts them in pretty good position. Absolutely. Anytime you can start your uh, drive from your own 40-yard line, that is a good positive right there, right? Yep, and uh, the Eagles took a timeout sometime this half. I can't remember when it was, so they're down to two timeouts for the half. Again, plenty of time. Lore, your quarterback, he's got a back on either side. Fakes, then he'll take it himself, and he will be swarmed and get back to the line of scrimmage maybe. Ran into his own player, but the reason he ran into his own player is the defensive line of Columbus Grove stood him up. Tell you what, I have been very impressed with the way Grove's been playing on the line. I have been, too. Ways. That makes it second and ten. You take a look at those four guys right there. You know, that defensive line by Columbus Grove. What a what a work they've done tonight. Kylan Mays there at 52 getting down in his stance. He's been a big anchor on that right side. Second and 10. Man goes in motion. Lore has it. Lore will keep it. Lore will go to the sideline. Cut up, up front, and he will get close to the first down, if not the first down. Looked like he was going sideline. Then he cut to his right and kind of went up the middle. Yeah, you give you have to give the offensive line that time of Colonel Crawford a lot of credit for that. Third and short. Kept the backside people um, under control and basically blew out that right uh, the offensive left side. So it is third and one. Balls at the 49 yard line. Crawford has twins here on the near side. A back with Lore. This will be Lore keeping it. Lore gets the first down, drives forward, and into Grove territory. So nice first down there, as that's another Dale's concrete first down. And we'll probably start seeing a little, little faster here. You know, we're down, getting down to the three-minute mark. No hurry right now. They do have two timeouts. Grove has all three of theirs be first and 10 at the 48 yard line. Lower in the backfield with a back. He's got one receiver on the far side. This will be a handoff. And going up the middle is Kleiner. And that'll pick up five. Yep. Second and five here, 244 left. And I have to say the coaching staff over there for Colonel Crawford is in shorts. <laughs> Look at that. Their head coach is in shorts. <laughs> Well, they came from Crawford County, which is just south of the uh, equator. Okay, right? is so, that what it is? Yeah. One receiver here on the near side. Got a back in the backfield and a tight end. And that is going to stop before it gets started. Did I think we have uh, time out. False no, start. False, false start. start. So that will make it significantly harder. Yes, it does. A dead ball. False start. Offense. You know, you burned five time yards, and you lost five Still yards. So that makes it second and 10 now. The offensive line has done pretty well for both teams. The penalties, that will be the first penalty for Crawford. And Columbus Grove has two penalties for 16 yards. 2.18 remaining here, fourth quarter. Clock has started, second and 10. Crawford at the Grove 48. It's a handoff. Kleiner goes to the sideline. We'll pick a couple of yards up. Ooh, a lot more yeah. yards. I thought he had the. He got out of bounds, but he got five. He must have stayed in bounds. He right? must have. It got it looked close. like it, but I think his knee was down in bounds, and keep, clock keeps running. But a good pickup. So it makes it third and four. And now we're starting to get into the late stages of this game as we go under two minutes to play. It'll be interesting to see here. If Crawford can score, they basically have four down. This is definitly four down territory, up seven or seven seven tie. They're taking their time, that's for sure. They are. Quarterback keeper, and he is stuffed. Got maybe a yard, so that'll bring up fourth down and four. And you think they're going to? No, it looks like they're just going to run it down. They're not taking timeouts, they're taking their time here. 
I wonder if they've got a. Uh, I think they're going to take it down and play to the. Uh, they've got to play to the the end zone right now or something. That or they're going to just take the clock down and possibly take a penalty and, and punt it. Well, let's see if the one minute offense is going to be true for right. Columbus Grove if they're going to punt. Play the clock's play clock, down yeah. seven. Play clock's down to five. Yeah. And they're going to call timeout. They're playing for the overtime. They really are. So it'll be fourth and three. They want to talk about this. And what are the overtime rules in high school football? I haven't had an overtime game this year. No, I know. You know, both teams are going to get a chance to score up the 20. Okay. So we go into that on ongoing battle. <laughs> yeah. Back from the 20 to the 20. And you know the way this is, you know, defensively, the way it's being played, you know, well, Knock on wood. We may be here a while. <laughs> <laughs> the snow is slowed but, uh, down. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what, though, and I, I go back to something. If we do go, if this does go into overtime, uh, as Coach Andy Schaefer said, and I have said this several times during the game, that an extra point or a field goal yep. may possibly decide this game. Especially in this weather. That's correct. And I'll tell you what, if it goes into too many overtimes, Jerry, you've got some people bunking at your house tonight. <laughs> i got an hour and a half drive back to Brian. <laughs> I've got wood in the fireplace. I told my wife to light the fire when I called her. Fourth and three. It looks like they're going for it. Laura's under center. Got to get him to jump off sides. That's what the, you're right. Yeah. Now they look to the sideline and see if they do it again. No. no, they're going to go for it. Laura looks to throw, throws the sideline, catches, made it, inbounds. bounds. No, out of bounds. A little surprised on that. I am too. Uh, well, Grove has 42 seconds to go. Let's see, my math's not great. 59 yards. <laughs> can they do it in 42 seconds, well, or can they at least get in a field I'm goal range? I'm just going to say, they've got and wins with them. How, how much do you think Grove wants Reese Bierhoff back right now? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Although, I think that's, that's the one thing about building a kicking rep yep. reputation is, you know, you have a lot of confidence in your kickers. All right, so Grove has it first and 10 at their own 41-yard line. Well, I think this play will really decide. Yep, okay, this will decide what they're going to do. Renner has it, and he will be yep. knocked down. And no timeouts called. Well, now a timeout's called by Grove. And the coach is walking out there with his team right now all the way out on the field. And both coaches are in shorts. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Braver men than me. I got the Under Armour on and I'm inside. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> The Hulk of Drywall scoreboard shows 7-7. Seven to seven. Crawford and Grove, tonight's scoreboard sponsors Hulk of Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hulkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And boy, oh boy, this is a good one. Seven to seven, 35 seconds to go here, fourth quarter. And both sidelines having a conversation right now. That first play did not go the way Grove wanted it to, and it was just a busted play. And it makes it second and 14. And what are you saying to your co your team right there if you're Columbus Grove's coach? Well, right now, you know, it's like don't lose, don't, no, no crazy, you know, hang on to the football. Regardless of what they're going to do, hang on to the football. You know, I said at the start of the game, two very, very good coaches. And yep. I, I have a lot of respect for both of them. And, you know, give a lot of credit to uh, Coach Andy Schaefer. I'd be surprised if they're going to take any knee here. I think, you know, you see the formation. They're, they're looking deep. Yeah, good for them. Quick throw to Barraza. He has it. Still on his feet to the 40. They're trying to spike the ball out of it. He puts two hands around it, and they shove him out of bounds. Well, they get him out of bounds. Save a timeout. And that'll get back uh, to the original line of scrimmage and then one. So that makes it second and eight. Well, they're going to say two. So second and eight will go. And good job there. They were stripping that ball, trying to strip that ball. And Barraza put yep. two hands around it, curled it like a baby. 25 seconds to go. Twins on each side. Renner in the backfield with a back. And he'll keep it. Renner goes... Up the middle, out to the 45-yard line. will pick up a couple more. Grove will call another timeout. That will give them one left. Close Makes it fourth down. Well, fourth down, it's too far to kick here. 
even for Veerhoff. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> it's on the 45-yard line, so let's see what you do with 19 seconds. On one hand, you might want to go for it and try to pick that up or get the head it to the end zone. But on the other hand, you want to not risk an interception pick six here. We have seen both teams take advantage of the pick sixes this year. Yeah. And you said about Grove having two in one playoff game, and Crawford also the recipient of uh, some good uh, turnovers. So let's see what Grove does here. There it looks yeah, like they're, they're going to punt. They're going to punt it. But I'll tell you what, they're telling them, like, <laughs> one, that snap is going to be good. Yep. Two, you are going to block. If you're Crawford, do you come after this? I think you do. Especially when they got one. Yep. They're coming. Ooh. Pretty close. Yeah, they got it pretty close. Crawford picks it up. They'll just head to the sideline. Nope, he stayed in bounds. Well, he's well gonna, change of possession, yeah, yeah, change timeout. Of possession. Yep. yep. So they'll make it first and 10. And they're going to spot that one at the 41 yard line. So again, that's where Columbus Grove yep. started. So 59 yards still. Yep. Let's see what the offense can do here. If you're the Eagles, you got Cam Lohr. He can had a 45 yard touchdown run versus Carey last week. He's got a couple of weapons, Trevor Vogt, Matt Clinton, and Micah Thomas, Dyer. So he's got the weapons out there. And yeah, gonna... it'd be interesting because, you know, they, they played for the timeout previously. Or, excuse me, played for the overtime uh, in the last possession. So, But he's got got, got double receivers. Double, yep, yep. Two receivers. And too. they're just going to play for overtime as he kneels it down. Yep. So we've got an overtime one here. From Finley's Donnell Stadium, 7-7, seven to seven, Colonel Crawford and Columbus Grove. We're heading to overtime as the Harkle Drywall scoreboard shows all tied up. Going to take a timeout, come back with overtime here on WOSN. Back on WOSN, we've played regulation, and now we're in overtime. Chris Malega, Jerry Snodgrass, and... Jerry, uh, these two teams we talked about being pretty evenly matched, and here it is 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, I mean, of all things, you know, not only are we going into overtime, but, you know, 7-7, seven, seven, you know, too low scoring. You know, that's what happens so much. You know, we talked about them being so strong defensively, and I think that's borne out to be the case too. Let's talk about how this happened. Crawford blocked a Columbus Grove yeah. punt. The punt rolled all the way to the four-yard line. They pounced on it, and so they had it there first and goal. And then Cam Lohr just went in from four yards out for a rushing touchdown to make it seven to nothing. And then Columbus Grove scored in the third quarter as they had a nice drive, and it was basically capped off by Zach Reynolds. He had two real long passes, including a 35-yard touchdown pass, or catch, I mean, but two long receptions there to kind of pace them. And, you know, really, you know, you talk about, you know, Grove made that drive to score a couple passes, but... Uh, really, Crawford has not threatened since defense. that you know that well you we know that four yard uh, burst you know after recovering the fumble. The but they really have not threatened. Away from the scoreboard. All right, so I did not hear what they were saying there, but I think Columbus Grove gets the first try. At least how they're lining up, and they're bringing their offense on the field. And they've got their backup quarterback in Landon Best. So just to let our viewers know, you know, we start from the 20-yard line. Each team will get opportunities. And after the third timeout, you, excuse me, after the third overtime, you must go for two. And um, so here we are in the first overtime from the 20-yard line. Grove having the ball first. Best in at quarterback. He's got a back with him in the backfield. Uh, doubles on the far side, single on their near side. Best will keep it himself, and he will just get swarmed, and he will get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. And I believe also, I could be wrong, but I think Grove took um, the wind, and even though it's a lot more of a crosswind, it's, it's shifted from earlier in the game, but still the wind is pretty much at their back. We talked about Shep Halker, their, court, yep. their kicker. You know, he, he worked with Reese Vierhoff, who's now at Marshall. 
And so they're confident in him that he can hit a field goal if need be. And his extra point really boomed. Yep. Best with it again. Another low snap. They quickly throw. This is Barraza, and he can't hold on to it. Uh, that was a lateral. And so he has to get on it. Now they're back all the way to the 30-yard line. I'm not sure when we watch that. Yep, it was. It was. Yep, it was a backward pass. So that'll make it. Now they're talking about it, though. Two officials here. I, I thought they're going to. I think they're going to overrule it. I thought it was backward. When we watched on replay. All right, we're going to call the officials in. They're going to huddle up, decide where they're going to eat afterward, but then yep. also talk about that one. They're going to try to call up to us and see if we'll replay it for them. So <laughs> use that video replay. You see the names of the officials tonight. Carl Schlegels, I mentioned him, crew chief there, that a longtime official and very good one. He's got a very good We call. had an inadvertent whistle on that play. Ooh. We will replay second down. Ooh, inadvertent Whoa. Re Whoa. whistle. That is big. And Coach Bruner looks hot on the sideline. Oh, yes. Oh, ho, 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 ho. wow. He's not happy. The inadvertent whistle, I believe, was because somebody blew it for a incomplete a pass. pass. When indeed it was a lateral. Wow. <laughs> okay, well, they get Grove gets a second chance, and if they score here. Ouch. Yeah, Crawford be upset. Uh, Moving forward. And barreling his way and short of the goal line. But a that first is down. A.J. Schaefer. Wow. He had some speed right there, and he's down. See, we got Schaefer. He's just turning forward, got through some holes, made a cut, and he ran. To, he hit, I think, a helmet with his own guy. Yeah, he did. And that's what it is. So that will be first and goal. Here, and the ball is spotted at the five, the two, excuse me. It's at the two, and this play stays alive because of the inadvertent whistle. Whoa. Okay. It's a little drama. Yes, Renner is in at quarterback. And fumble a fumble. snap, and he just gets drilled. Wow. Renner able to get it back. Grove has had major trouble with snaps yep. today. I think this is six or seven that they've fumbled. Yeah, and that, that one was actually not above his head. So I just you can tell he took his eyes off of it. That knocks it back a couple yards. This will be second and goal from the six. So that a loss hurts. of four. It yep, absolutely that does. hurts. And now they're running Veraza off, and they got A.J. Schaefer in at back. Hawker's there as well. They've also got Landon Schrader. As a potential option. Handoff. Schaefer cuts to the left side. Schaefer down at the two-yard line. And so Schaefer again with a nice carry, but a big-time uh, stop coming in there for Crawford. I'm trying to get the number on who made that stop. Uh, I'd be surprised if they don't keep Schaefer in the backfield. Go to him. He's a power runner. He's shown that the last few carries there. That he's just mowing over people. And he's got 50, 50 pounds on Barraza. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Both the same height. Low nope. snap again. Nope. Schaefer with Score. it. Schaefer in for the touchdown. So Columbus Grove strikes first in overtime. And that makes it 7, or excuse me, 13-7. You know, the challenge right now for Jake Bruner, Coach uh, Colonel Crawford, is to stay focused. You know, and, and it's hard. I mean, it's difficult. I've been in those shoes in other sports, you know, and you know because you've got to be the leader to your kids and keep them focused. So, you, because you're going to get the chance now too. All right. So the extra point is critical here. Shep Halker is your extra point kicker. And the Grove fans right in front of us are really loud and excited for their team. Yeah, I suppose after that inadvertent whistle, I'm pretty glad we're not on the Colonel Crawford side. Oh, my goodness. You're right. And I could see where it would be an inadvertent whistle. It looked like it was yeah. a oh, yeah. forward yeah. pass. Kick is up. We got a penalty marker down, and they just took Hawker out. What is the penalty? Dead ball. False start. False, False start. So that'll back him up five. five yards. So this Three could kick. be critical right here. Sure could be. Becomes uh, from an extra point to a chip shot yep. field goal. Well, again, he's got a strong leg. I mean, even that one where he went ahead and kicked it, you know, it was very, very good kick. So it's just a matter of 
you know, directional right now. But Crawford came in pretty heavy yes, with, they the, did. with the pressure. So let's see what they do here. And they will again. No, they'll. That whole right side of their line is coming. Kick is up. It's good. And it is good. So Grove takes a 14-7 lead here in overtime. Crawford will get to go at the 20 as well, and they need a touchdown now. Always good to be the first to yeah, get the is. ball yep. and score a yep. touchdown because now you know what you need. Yep. And so Coach Bruner is talking to his team, and they're going to go from the same yep. the same uh, side of the field, yep. which they is a little different. End. Yep, they picked the end. So 14-7, to seven, and now the Eagles need a touchdown. That's the, the story of the game. And let's see if the Grove defense now can come up big here. Cam Lohr is your quarterback. He's a running threat. I've talked about, you know, the defensive and offensive lines of these teams, the offensive line of Colonel Crawford, the defensive line of Grove. And, boy, are they so important right now, whoever wins that battle. So Lohr is in the backfield in shotgun. He has it. He will hand off. Climber is swarmed. Kleiner goes nowhere. And coming in and making the play, 52 from Columbus Grove. That's Kylan Mays again. We've called his name all night. And I wouldn't be surprised to see either a little misdirection here or at least Lore keeping the ball. So they'll run in a different back. This is Ryan McMichael. They run out Horsley and Tristan Baker. Lore has it looking to throw down the field. He throws. Catch is made. No, nope, out nope, of bounds. Nope. I think it went off two receivers' hands. So that makes it third and 11 now. Let's see if we can see this one on the replay. Yep, it went off his hands. So that makes it third and 11. What do the Crawford offense have dialed up right now? Lore is your quarterback. They'll bring in Leinard. They also got Tanner Dyer in there as well. It's going to be a pass. Lore looks to throw, and then he's going to get it swarmed. Wow. And Grove will make it now fourth down and long. Cro or, uh, the defense there by... The Grove Bulldogs has been pretty impressive right there. 61, was, Dylan Bryan. Yeah, Dylan Bryan in on that. So this is fourth Boy, and a whole that. bunch. Fourth and 17. Boy, and kept the grasp on him so he didn't get away from him. Well, here it is. This is the ball game. Crawford needs a first down if they want to stay into this. And it's fourth and 17. And they're going to use their timeout time and talk out. about this. Oh, I Grove. think Grove's taking the timeout. Oh, Grove out. is yep. taking the yep. timeout. They want to be very sure they have the right play called. Yep. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Hulker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hulkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And that scoreboard shows 14-7 in favor of Columbus Grove. Crawford got on the board first with a block punt that was first in goal from the four. Columbus Grove scored late in the game to make it 7-7. Seven seven. And then in overtime, Grove made it 14-7. And Crawford's got one more play here to see if they can make this one happen. Going to take a quick timeout on WOSN. Back out here from Donnell Stadium. It is fourth and 17 on the 27 yard line. The line to gain is the 10. And if Colonel Crawford does not get the 10 yard line and a Dale's concrete first down, this game is over. Well, they're gonna you know, hope to for a penalty, you know, an interference. Lore has it. Lore looking to throw. Lore is on his feet. Lore does not get there. And Colonel Crawford will go down to defeat. And Columbus Grove will be your victor here as we have it. And is there a penalty or? No, no, I just, you know, I see, you know, officials need to get off the field. Yep, officials getting off because they are getting screamed at by 
They're getting yelled at by oh, some of the players. Yeah, this is this yep. is not right. It's, it's not. And they know there's frustration over there yep. on the sideline yep. about the the you know penalty that happened yep. or the inadvertent whistle. And they're calling the coaches over quickly. Yep. And I don't even know if we're going to get a handshake line. Yeah. I guess we are. Yeah, we are. That's good. They'll settle down. They'll sit. coaches will settle down. And the officials get off there quickly because that inadvertent whistle basically made the game. Yeah, it did. <laughs> you never want that to kind of happen. And again, though, I, we both said it. I can see how it happened. Yep. I mean, we had the, how many times did we look at that replay to yep. say that it was a lateral and not a forward pass? Incomplete Absolutely. Pass. Yep. So congratulations to Columbus Grove. They will go on and they will face uh, uh, the winner of the other game in the bracket. That will be uh, – Crestview and Columbia Station, Columbia. We don't have a score on that one. There's the bottom half of the bracket in Division 6, Region 22. So they will be in the regional final, one of those two teams. Number two, Crestview. Number three, Columbia. And back at the top of the bracket, we now have Colonel Crawford losing to Columbus Grove. Columbus Grove, the five seed, and they will head to the regional final and face um, Columbia Station, uh, Columbia, or Ashland Crestview. And that is going to be happening next Saturday night as the uh, playoffs go to Saturdays in region in Division Six now. And I think so, it was either last year or the year before uh, uh, Crestview ended uh, Grove season. Absolutely. So, you know, again, it may not be them, but Columbia Station clear over in the Northeast, and that's you know quite a ways away from here. All right, our uh, final of fourteen to seven, Columbus Grove defeats Colonel Crawford in overtime. We're going to take a timeout, come back, and wrap things up after this on WOSN. Back out here from Donnell Stadium. It is fourth and 17 on the 27-yard line. The line to gain is the 10. And if Colonel Crawford does not get the 10-yard line and a Dales concrete first down, this game is over. Well, they're going to you know, hope to for a penalty, you know, an interference. Lohr has it. Lohr looking to throw. Lohr is on his feet. Lohr... Does not get there, and Colonel Crawford will go down to defeat, and Columbus Grove will be your victor here as we have it. And is there a penalty? Or? No, no. I just, you know, I see, you know, officials need to get off the field. Yep, officials getting they off are. because they are getting screamed at by, they're getting yelled at by oh, some of the players. No, this is, this yep. is not right. It's, it's not. And I know there's frustration over there yep. on the sideline yep. about the, the you know penalty that happened yep. or the inadvertent whistle and they're calling the coaches over quickly yep. and i don't even know if we're going to get a handshake line yeah. i guess we are yeah we are that's good they'll settle down they'll sit coaches will settle them down and the officials get off there quickly because that inadvertent whistle basically made the game yeah it did <laughs> you never want that to kind of happen and again though I, we both said it can see how it happened yep i mean we had the, how many times did we look at that replay to yep. say that it was a lateral and not a forward pass Incomplete Absolutely. Pass. Yep. So congratulations to Columbus Grove. They will go on and they will face uh, uh, the winner of the other game in the bracket. That will be uh, Crestview and Columbia Station, Columbia. We don't have a score on that one. There's the bottom half of the bracket in Division 6, Region 22. So they will be in the regional final, one of those two teams. Number two, Crestview. Number three, Columbia. And back at the top of the bracket, we now have Colonel Crawford losing to Columbus Grove. Columbus Grove, the five seed, and they will head to the regional final and face um, Columbia Station, uh, Columbia, or Ashland Crestview. And that is going to be happening next Saturday night as the uh, playoffs go to Saturdays in, region, in Division Six now. And I think so, it was either last year or the year before uh, uh, Crestview ended uh grove season absolutely so, you know again it may not be them but columbia station clear over in the northeast and that's you know quite a ways away from here all right our uh, final of 14 to 7 columbus grove defeats colonel crawford in overtime we're going to take a time out come back and wrap things up after this on wosn back out on wosn congratulations to the columbus grove bulldogs they're victorious in overtime against the colonel colonial crawford 
Eagles 14 to 7. Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass, and Jerry, uh, you know, it was we we've seen some big stuff happen in the pump block that gave uh, Crawford their first touchdown, but then Grove put together a nice drive to tie it up, and then in overtime, you know, a little bit of a bailout with a potential inadvertent, well, it wasn't a potential, it was an inverse of whistle, you know, on a play that was busted up, and uh, Grove had some new life and able to put a touchdown in, and uh, Crawford uh, really not able to move the ball after that. No, I, you know, we thought really throughout the game that that blocked punt, that four-yard touchdown run was going to hold up throughout the game. It didn't. You know, Columbus Grove came back with a nice drive, you know, and a good score, you know, and then, but when you really look at it, I, I think the the defense of, uh, you know, both teams had great, great defenses, but Columbus Grove's defense really rose to the occasion at the end, and uh, that really ended up being the story. I think that their defensive front four, their pass defense deep, you know, was where they needed to be and uh, ended up, again, Coach Schaefer's talked about his linebackers being so good. They were. I mean, that was really the story. The offensive, li- or excuse me, defensive line and linebackers. Absolutely. Let's take a look at some stats. Colonel Crawford had eight first downs to Columbus Grove's 14, and that number really shocks me because I didn't think they had that many at halftime. So definitely a different half, second half team there. Third down efficiency. Crawford was four of 14, Grove nine of 20. Neither team had a fourth down conversion. They were both 0 of 3. Uh, Colonel Crawford had 125 rushing yards on 38 carries, 47 passing yards on 15 attempts, and they were 8 of 15 passing for 50 three percent 160 yards of total offense for Colonel Crawford meanwhile Grove had 131 rushing yards on 40 attempts 124 passing yards on 25 attempts they were 11 of 25 for 44 percent total of 231 yards Crawford had four sacks for 24 yards Columbus Grove two sacks for 12 yards Crawford was penalized one time for five yards Grove four times for 26 yards and Grove lost a fumble uh, and they each had 12 possessions. And so uh, Crawford had the ball for 26 uh, minutes and 6 seconds and Grove 21 minutes and 54 seconds, but 12 possessions, pretty even game. Taking a look at some individual stats, Kleiner had 15 attempts for 26 yards. Um, Lohr, 17 attempts for 83 yards and one touchdown. And on the other side for Grove, A.J. Schaefer had 12 attempts for 65 yards and a touchdown. Barraza, 15 attempts for 51 yards uh, rushing. Passing Lore again was 8 for 15 for 47 yards. He was sacked twice, did not have a touchdown nor an interception. Brandon Renner, Brenton Renner, excuse me, was 10 for 23 for 98 yards. He was sacked three times. He had one touchdown. And Landon Best had was 1 for 2 for 26 yards. Receiving uh, Trevor Boat was uh, four receptions or two receptions for seven yards. Uh, Kleinard had three receptions for 15. McMichael had one reception for 13, so only 47 yards uh, receiving. Shep Halker, by the way, had four receptions for 27 yards, two for 59 for Zach Reynolds, A.J. Schaefer, one for 13, and Barraza, four for 25. And uh, there's basically the story of the game in statistics, 14-7. to seven, Columbus Grove defeats Colonel Crawford. In I uh, score fourteen to seven in uh, overtime. So thoughts? Well, number one, you know, we knew we started the game. We were going to have a very, very close. We thought the teams were evenly matched, and obviously the score, you know, bore that out. You know, we look too right now on the field. You know, we see Colonel Crawford down there, and you think emotions aren't a big part of this game. And you know, these seniors, I feel for them. You know, been there before, and you know, you, you coaches spend so much time with them, and you know, it's a family, and you hate to see it end, but. You know, at the same time, I mean, it was a great, great football game. I think Grove will use a lot out of this, you know, that things didn't come easy. And even next week, it's going to be a cold week, but they've got things to work on. And I think that gives them a little bit going into the, the next round and, you know, stay alive for another day. And that's the uh, biggest thing. They may not have played perfect, but, again, I cannot emphasize enough the defensive line, defensive uh, linebackers for Grove. They were just phenomenal. And again, I'll say the same thing about Colonel Crawford. Their yep. lineman, oh, Ketterman is, is, he's a beast to watch. And I really give them a lot of credit. Well coached teams, and obviously only one gets to go on. And they will go on uh, Columbus Grove, and they will face Columbia as Columbia huh? defeats uh, Crestview by a score of 12 to 6. So Crestview out of Ashland, Columbia 
out of Columbia Station. And so it'll be Columbia and Columbus Grove. About two two teams are about as far apart from yeah, each other as you can get in Ohio. So I don't know where they play that one. Probably maybe the Cleveland area. Yeah, maybe probably Columbus, this this field. Yeah, somewhere this side of you know somewhere in between. You know, and I lived that. So you know, I was always fun to be able to map out where you're going to play games. You know, and I know we don't have a lot of time to say this, but I give a lot of kudos to the Finley staff for yep. hosting this. That's a story all in its own right. Yep. But Nate Wyrock, uh, his secretary, Kerry Buck here, that put on this show for these teams and do this, and that's who they're doing it for. Yep. They're doing it for two teams, uh, giving to their community. And I don't think, and again, I lived that life for so many years yep. that uh, people don't realize what goes into it for a tournament manager. But uh, t- you know, to close that part of it, you know that score on the other side, 12-6, I think we know what kind of a game we're going to yeah, have next week. Have <laughs> so, it yeah. Like, yeah. It sounds like. Well, we want to thank uh, all our sponsors bringing you the game. Our scoreboard tonight was sponsored by Hulker Drywall. Uh, our first downs tonight by Dale's Concrete. want to thank all of our sponsors bringing you the game here on WOSN. I want to thank you, Jerry Snodgrass, for uh, doing the game with me. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be uh, here with you doing the game tonight, and I just really appreciate uh, your insight and knowledge about the high school sports here in Ohio. Hey, it's an honor to, to be with you, and, and, you're, and, and I will say this. What a great tech crew Absolutely. and camera crew. Absolutely. And I know you know them pretty well, I so do. I'm telling you, Give them a raise. Okay, our so, director tonight is Tony Malanga. Yep. If the name sounds familiar, that's why. Our camera, Don Malanga and John Tripodi. And uh, for Finley High School, I want to thank Kerry Buck and Nate Ryrock here at Finley for uh, all the hospitality. For Jerry Snodgrass and all of us at WOSN, I'm Chris Malanga. Your final score tonight, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 14, the Colonel Crawford Eagles 7 in overtime. Take you back here on WOSN-TV.